You are about to witness history in the making. Hello, good evening and welcome everyone to the latest episode of the Pop Culture Gamers podcast. It's episode 29. Today is the 11th of November, which for those of you in the United Kingdom know, it's Remembrance Sunday, which is um, a day that's held across the UK and also the Commonwealth to celebrate the contribution of all of the uh, military and civilian servicemen and women in the two world wars and later conflicts. So just want to recognise that day today. And joined um, with me, as always, uh, is Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Just a, just a note to that. It is 100, it's, I think, the 100 years to it now as well. It is from the First World War with the 100th yeah. anniversary. Yeah. So, hmm. Mm. Very poignant day today. Indeed, indeed. Anyway, we won't dawdle on that, but we just wanted to recognise the fact that the day is taking place uh, and there's been all sorts of televised events and stuff like that as there always is on this day this time of year and a matter of fact he's an interesting fact as well uh, my son was actually christened on this day as well <laughs> was he really yeah on remembrance sunday uh going back 11 years ago so it was just uh you know a, more of a significant day uh for me as well uh, in that respect anyway steve what have you been doing, mate? Because we haven't been talking very much at all, other than uh, a few brief uh, conversations Text. through, uh, yeah, through Facebook Messenger or whatever. Yeah, I know. It's. I think we 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 both sort of naughty on that at the moment. Yeah, well, we're both doing completely different sort of gaming, aren't we? And also, you've got your royal blue blood on, haven't you, as well? <laughs> yeah, I have been on the Xbox a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you switched it on for an update, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just reset my password, funnily enough, as well. I like to redo that. But, um, yeah, so gaming-wise, I've been still enjoying Red Dead Redemption. Um, I could, you could be on that. Uh, I don't know how long, but we'll talk about that later. Um, mm. Things this week. Oh, I had some training on Friday, and I, my IPATH license has run out. This is for work. And what it means is it allows me to drive cherry pickers if you know what they are. Mm, I think I do, but for the <laughs> sake of those in our audience who might not know. So, for example, there's different types. There's, there's a type called a scissor lift. So you drive, it's got four wheels, you have a joystick in the, in the box at the top, and you can raise on a scissor going up and down. Yeah. So you need to reach something. But the ones I normally use, is which, which are diesel ones, uh, four-wheel drive, which have a basket, and then they have like a telescopic extension on that. And it will rise and then boom out. Yeah. So we can get to all sorts of places for, for work and stuff like that. Mm. But Because uh, your job does involve going up on high, doesn't it? I, just a little bit. <laughs> Very high sometimes as well. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be afraid of heights in my job, to be honest. But wouldn't yeah, be any good for me. I get vertigo in thick socks. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing was we had in this this course we did, I didn't actually the the the, the cherry pick I normally use wasn't in the course. All right. So there was a um, a scissor lift and a this other little device, but it will allow me still to use the ones I need to use. That's fine. But what we had to do was after we did the the practical, which was most of the morning, mm. we get out there and have to go outside. Well, we can go outside because it's tipping with rain, but in in the open space area of this warehouse, we have to maneuver the vehicle around and take it up to a point, tap the ceiling, come down, you know, do all this sort of stuff. It was more, it, it was really weird because you said, if you touch a cone, you fail. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, if you touch it, sorry, that is it. I'm thinking, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Mm. So I was, I was actually last. So I was watching all the others go there and they were saying, oh, did, you know, I was pointing some things out that some of them didn't do when she asked the question. So when it comes to me doing it, God, I was so precise in how to do this. 
because you have to remove the the way you move the vehicle is that it can spin on its back wheel. Right. So when you're going through a set of cones and you're and you're going from one set to the next set, you know you're going to line up with one cone to be able to spin it to move it into the next position. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know it's like seven or eight moves to get through all the cones. And yeah. I I did that with flying colours, which was good. I was. It's more of a game for me, I think, that be become. Because mm-hmm. some of the guys didn't operate, couldn't operate the joystick very well. And I thought, ha, they ain't gamers, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say exactly the same thing there. <laughs> you know, the one guy was jerking it around. I said, just be gentle with it, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, so that was all good. So I got that done out of the way. And if, and if he used his other hand, it'd feel like a completely different cherry picker. <laughs> yeah, it would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there was no mouse involved in this one. But anyway... Um, I had an email from Game on Friday saying that my parcel would be arriving on the Saturday. Yep. Uh, but nothing turned up. And I don't know if, it, if these are automated ones, even though the release of Fallout 76 isn't until the 14th, which is going to be, what, middle of the week? Mm-hmm. So I had a bit of a rant. I spoke to Game and they said, sorry for this. We do, we do apologise. I well, OK, whatever. And then I had a tweet from Yoda after saying that they were crap. So I gave them my details just to see where it was because Game said they've got it. Yodel said they haven't got it. So where the frickin' hell is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And especially they're going to need a signature to uh, to to get this, you know, when they deliver it. Because I won't yeah. be, I won't be around during the week to do that. So it'll end up going back to the depot more likely. No, it's, it's, it seems to me I'll sign it for you. Just tell them to send it up here. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want it. You won't <laughs> like it. It won't fit your head. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I look forward to that. Um, I was, I was hassling. Actually, it's quite funny because I was. There's one podcast I listened to quite a while ago, which is a Mission Impossible one. All oh, right, uh, no, not come across that one. It's, it's it's called Light the Fuse. Okay. And uh, they had a representative from Mondo who do the soundtracks um, in, in Vidal, one of the companies I use. Mm-hmm. And he was going about bits and pieces, saying yeah about the Mission Impossible soundtrack, which I've already ordered. I've already, I've already got that waiting to be delivered, and it's got can't, it's got delayed, and it's not coming out till after Thanksgiving. So that's when that gets shipped. But he did mention because they were talking about Danny Elfman. Yeah. They were talking about um, one of his other projects that can be coming this year is the release of the Batman soundtrack. Yes, which is a fantastic, fantastic music on that movie. Still, I know we all love the uh, the, the latest Batman, but I do like uh, <clears throat> Michael Keaton as Batman. I think he's got that he's got that that craziness and darkness in him that, that works well to be honest. Mm. So the guy said that ages ago. So I've been hassling Mondo and I was chatting to him on Twitter and saying, "Oh, can I ask you a question?" And uh, the reply back was a cut from Batman where Vicky Vale's in the in the in the passenger seat and he turns the light on her to keep her head eyes out of the way. So silence is golden there on that one. And then funny enough, the next day it gets. They, there's a tweet out from the company that's bringing it out for them saying it's coming out shortly this month. <laughs> now, whether or not I push that push that to happen, I don't know, but you never know. So so I look forward to keep picking that up at some point when it, when it gets released. I'll keep an eye out for that. It's normally on a Wednesday that they, um, they they get released on the website. So I have to be on, on the finger on the pulse to do that. Yeah. Because it's going to be the expanded vinyl. is only going to be a limited edition with so many pressings, so um, I need to get on that pretty fast. And just say that uh, about those, I've actually got Bill and Ted soundtrack. That's that's what it's way at the moment because they've just repressed that, so I've just picked that up as well. So uh, I do enjoy that film, and I'm, I don't know about I don't know about the sequel. We'll see if that ever does materialise into something, but uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, well, the run about that's going to be where they're in their like forties, isn't it? Mm. So more. Been, I don't think they'll be adults at forty. So I still think they'll be like kids myself. But uh, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> I, I, I can't see them progressing in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Those two characters. No, not at all. And just yeah, just the last thing. Obviously, I watched the Xbox XO eighteen um, Xbox showcase last night, which was held in Mexico. Yeah, um, it's on again tonight. So I might just put my phone on to mixer just to grab the points. If you know what I mean with that. Um, I do. I suppose we'll talk about that in the news. Um, I don't think we got it there, but they they did they gave um, they gave us for the Game Pass another another 
16 odd um, games being thrown on it. Yeah, well, I mean, I've mentioned most of them because if you have a look in the news section on our. Uh, document you'll see I've stuck in a load of stuff but yeah. I haven't mentioned about some of the stuff that was mentioned because I thought that there is stuff that you're going to want to wax lyrical about oh there's one thing especially but you've ever, yeah. you haven't written it down there and I'm, I'm <laughs> just, just on a side note to this without saying what it was I was on CX today trying to see what copies I could pick up yeah <laughs> and yeah and they've all got up massively no in price, they haven't probably. I, do you know what? I'll have a look at my phone because I've still got it on in my basket. You want to get them ordered today because tomorrow those prices will be tripled. Yeah, and uh, we'll mention what they are in a, a bit later when we get to the news. Yep. So anyway, so what you've been, as I'd say, not seen you for a while. I know. To? Well, I've been up to absolutely nothing, to be honest. That's the reason then. <laughs> Going to work, um, and that's about it, really. Uh, this week... My son's not been very well, and my mm. wife had a procedure on her foot. Oh, yes, she did. Yes, right. She's okay, yeah. is she? Uh, yeah, she's okay. A bit of, she's causing a bit of pain. She thought it was going to be a one-off sort of thing, and then it would be solved. But evidently, no, this is something that has to be kept going over and over and over again every few months. Yeah. So, you know, she she made the most of the fact that, you know, she actually had the, the uh, yeah, you know, oh, I'll just sit with my feet up, or would you make a cup of tea? You know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> I didn't mind, but I had them both off sick. So, of course, that really was the, because I was hoping, even though I'd said, you know, my wife's got in, got this procedure, I might not be able to go. I was hoping to get to Edinburgh this weekend mm. because it was the show, you know, the uh, for the 80s. Oh, for the love of eighties, uh, show that which was a Comic Con, Scotland, and unfortunately, I'm not able to. I wasn't able to go because I, in good conscience, you know, my son's ill, my wife's not on top form. I couldn't, re- you know, I didn't think it was very fair for me to then go off for the day to Scotland and then come back and be full of the joys of spring about everybody who had seen. And then she's sort of like, "Well, thanks for that." Mm. So. I got in contact with Monopoly events, let them know, sorry, I can't make it. But also had a look at some of the other events that they've got going on. And in December, um, on the 1st and 2nd, they've actually got Comic Con in Manchester. There is, I've seen, I've seen that for a little while. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, and it's for the love of sci-fi. And at this one, uh, there is going to be for Predator, Carl Weathers, Bill Duke and uh, Jesse Ventura mm. from Rocky. Obviously, Carl Weathers is always already going to be there, but there's also going to be Bridget Nielsen and Henry Thompson and uh, D. Wallace. There's going to be Robert McNaughton and Matthew uh, Demerit. There's from ET. There's <coughs> also going to be Lou Faringo. Uh, Fer- Faringo, no, so I can never say his surname. The Incredible Hulk. Ray Parker Jr. is going to be there as well. There's going to be uh, Spencer Wilding from Rogue One, who mm. I believe played Darth Vader okay. in it. Uh, and there's also going to be uh, Nick Mealy and Yoda because uh, for the Star Wars uh, creature special effects. Mike Gunn from Star Wars, who's uh, uh, Nien Nub. You know, the co-pilot for Lando and the Millennium Falcon in uh, The Return of the Jedi. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, he's going to be there. And also Paul Blake, who played Greedo. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm with you, yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be a few there. There's going to be props and all of that sort of thing. There's going to be the Star Wars Cantina, Luke Skywalker's Land Speed is going to be there, cosplay, merchandise, and whatever. So I've... Uh, briefly emailed them and said I'd be interested in going to this so I'm gonna uh and I've been said well contact us next week so see where we go with that one mm. uh, but hopefully I should be able to get to that because Manchester is much more doable for me it's only about an hour and a half yeah so it's not not too far at all but other than that my wife my yeah uh, my wife my life <laughs> <laughs> has been relatively quiet just popping to work popping back really enjoying my new job um absolutely love it so and it, also it's not completely office bound which is quite nice as well so you know i'm getting out and about a little bit but not too much just enough 
Do you know what I mean? Just mm. enough so you're not sat in the same office all of the time. Yeah. Because there's yeah. nothing worse than than that. And you know, for someone who's out and about like you are all of the time, mm. I can imagine that that would be your idea of hell. <laughs> well, I'd be. Do you know, I'd be. I'd be nodding off at the desk. I tell you, I would. If it's, it's, if it's a hot room, you know, I'd be. I'd be sneezing. I'd be going off. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the moment, I've got an office to myself, mm. so you know, I'm quite lucky in that kind of respect. Uh, so it means that I can, you know, stick on a bit of Amazon Prime coming out my phone quite quietly so it doesn't disturb, you know, the other other rooms. I just start catching up with my work and doing what I need to do and listening to a bit of music while I do it, which is really quite nice. Oh, yeah, that's all right. You know, yeah. so, yeah, I don't mind doing that at all. I, I used to, in my old job, I used to sit there with my headphones in and, you know, listen to my music that way but now i don't have to i can just play it out off my phone just like on like two you know <laughs> not loud <laughs> but, of course not <laughs> no no unfortunately not because i think my boss had come in and said are you having a disco in here <laughs> <laughs> a disco <laughs> shows my age doesn't it anyway uh that's it from me really so shall we go on to gaming this week okay no longer a dream, but a reality. Okay, so gaming this week, and, well, we have a big uh, Xbox uh, expo, don't we, for the uh, XO 2018. Was it in Mexico? It was, yeah. It was, yeah. So, Steve, I think you caught more of this than me. I've made some notes, but shall we just um, go think, through some yeah, of this I stuff think, that's in here? Yeah, I think, you know, it's a pretty much spot on, other than the bit I was going to talk about, but yeah. So, the first thing they, they did mention was that PUBG was going to go to Game Pass. Yes. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it depends, I think. It's not my cup of tea, that game, to be honest. Yeah, well, it's, sure. it, it's not mine. As a matter of fact, even on the Xbox One X, I just don't think it runs very well. Mm. To be if if I be brutally honest, I just <clears throat> runs like a bag of spanners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that was pretty. I mean, being a, an exclusive at the moment, but I think it's going to be going to PS4 shortly, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah, there's been an announcement that it's no longer exclusive. Well, that's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? But what they've done is, before they've done that, they've got done a good deal of putting it on Game Pass, which I think's probably the good thing to do, to be honest. Yeah, and also the other thing about it as well, one of my favourite games, the ex-PlayStation exclusive, Hellblade, which yeah. is obviously now on Xbox, is now also going on to Game Pass because Ninja Theory is an ex uh, Microsoft company now. Exactly. And actually, I've probably, even though I've been playing it, i never completed it on the PlayStation. I think I'll play that on the Xbox now from the beginning. Yeah, and all I'm going to say is before you beat my crescendo is I have more to talk about Hellblade <laughs> later on. Because <laughs> you always steal my thunder, so I'm going to get it in before you say Because <laughs> I just felt that that was, that was one of the next no, words it, that you were that, coming for me in your you voice. What I was going to say was, you know, well, that's a quite little segue on that one, but yeah, okay. Um, also, after this, they showed you they showed you some Crackdown Three, believe it or not, and they showed you the wrecking, the wrecking crew, um, from PvP, and that looked fun. Five v five, and you got to kill each other, but you can destroy the buildings to help get that done. Yes, and you can literally topple a whole building, fully destructible environment. Yeah, and it's obviously this is all from the cloud as well. So. Yeah, this so, is this cloud processing that they're on about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, which would be interesting to see how that works because obviously the, whether you've got an Xbox or an Xbox One X, it won't make any difference because all that power is working from the cloud and not your Xbox. Mm. Uh, but it looked pretty cool, I must admit. Uh, they did, after that, they did announce also that they were giving away Crackdown for free. Yes. Which I think most of us have already got anyway. I think so. It's be, I, I think we've had that in many different ways uh, <clears throat> for that. After that, they did show some... I did fall asleep for a while when they did Sea of Thieves because it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, it's it, Thief of Thieves, isn't it? The expansion pass that's coming to it. Yeah, but I mean, probably it might be worth... You know, you know, in a year's time, once that game's been built up, it might be quite worth worth having a look at it. Yeah, I had a bit of a dabble, but it, it just wasn't doing it for me, mm. to be honest. It just seemed like a pirate... Well, a... a 
a not as good pirate version of uh, Fable. Right. Because it's sort of like in a Fable style, isn't it? The graphics. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I did play a little bit originally, but uh, yeah, that's where you've got to get people to play with you online, Hayden. You it I mean? is. So, yeah, yeah. When, they're not, when they're not on PlayStation, Steve. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> 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 now, I didn't I didn't see the Fortune Island DLC before the Horizon 4. No, I didn't either. I missed that bit. I may well have been out of the room at the time. But, um, then they moved on to Minecraft, and there's some bits of improvements for that with some little bits of DLC. Yeah, it's I, improving the marketplace and that, making it bigger, yeah. isn't it? And they can actually have, you can actually drive cars in it. Do you see that in helicopters? Yeah, do you know, evidently, 91 million users a week. Unreal. On that. Yeah. And I mean... <laughs> Just, just going back. You just reminded me. Going back to Forza Horizon Four. Yeah. And I was listening. To, I can't think which podcast it mentioned it, but did you know that Forza Horizon Four sold more copies than Assassin's Creed Odyssey from both PlayStation and PS4? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I nearly choked on my coffee when I listened to that. That is bonkers. Because mm. you imagine the amount of people that bought it on the PlayStation, you know, obviously there's a lot of PlayStation 4s out there as well as a lot of Xboxes. But Forza Horizon beat both of them for yeah. that, which is impressive. Yeah, Anyways. I, mean, I know that Assassin's Creed's like a mainstream game, but it's more of a niche mainstream game, though, isn't it? Mm. But then yeah. again, so's Forza. Yeah, so. but, uh, but that's, that was quite good to hear about that. Anyway, um, they moved on to showing you some State of Decay. DLC as well. Yeah, it's free DLC, isn't it? Yeah, um, I've not dived into that game yet. I'm not. I, too sure. I played it for about six hours, hmm. and then I got my. You know, there was a light in it. Uh, you know, something sparkling somewhere else, and my head looked. Yeah, and then I forgot about it. <laughs> uh, so off the top of my head, so we had we got Xbox. They got mouse and keyboard support. Yep. There was they, actually. Do you know what? I actually put my interest up on this because one of your franchises that you love, Just Cause Four. Yes, that did look good. It does look really good, and some of the stuff that you can do is crazy, like attaching balloons to a tank, and then you can have a flying tank. Well, there was that way you could actually you could have a, like a, a a rocket that could fire off rockets that would do a sideways shoot. And take a whole bridge down. Yeah. So that was quite interesting. Obviously, we had some more information on Jump Force, which is a sort of fighting game. Yeah, because they were showcasing a couple of the fighters, weren't they? Mm. Uh, Battlefield Five. Are, are they interested in that? I might be. I might be. I mean, I've as, got, uh, as long as I don't get rid of the campaign. Well, I could download. I've got ten hours worth to download, actually. On that game. Yeah, so have I. I've been thinking about downloading it, but I've got so much on at the moment. Yeah. Um, because I've also I've also got Forsaken on the PC. <laughs> yeah. You need and to get a PC, mate. No, I need you to start playing Destiny with me. <laughs> you just don't play it. Um, so there was some Kingdom Hearts. They showed us some of that, which was quite interesting. Yes, with the new character of Winnie the Pooh. It did sound like him, though, didn't it? Then, uh, to be honest, I can't remember what Winnie the Pooh sounds like, but I just uh, remember, okay. I thought, oh, Winnie the Pooh. There was uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the Forge, that actually, actually a little bit of content there. Yeah, it's a new DLC, isn't it? Yeah. We had, as I said, we had 16 games coming to Game Pass, which was, you know, I think included, off the top of my head, there was Ori and the Blind Forest. Both, both of the Oris. Yeah, there's a new one of that, and some other bits and pieces. Thomas Was Alone was another one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've already mentioned Hellblade. Hellblade. So that's quite impressive, though, that they're doing this. I think, you know. And then they had a chat with, I don't know the, the guy's name from Square Enix. I was he, talking about the PC version of Wind, of uh, Final Fantasy, wasn't he? Yeah. For some of it. And he was asking the Mexicans to calm down a bit because they were a bit loud. He was trying yeah. to talk. Because did you notice the lady there that was doing the translating was had a notepad and paper writing it down? I did, yeah, because he rabbited on for ages, so she had to make <laughs> make notes. But what was interesting was the Windows version of PC is not just a port, it's a complete rewrite yeah. of the game. And it's what they would classify as the next generation of Final Fantasy because of the enhancements that they've put in mm. uh, above the, you know, the, even the Pro DX versions of the game. 
So that's sort of like made me a bit intrigued to think, do I want to actually try that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I do like Final Fantasy XV. But what was interesting was that they, they he said, I've got, you've got, then obviously the guy must have known, have you got anything else you like to say? And he started rabbiting on in, Jap- in Japanese and, and then, she, then he came out and said that we're bringing out Final Fantasy XIII, XIII 2 and Lightning Returns as back compact. Yep. And I was actually, hands up, to say that I actually went on there to tick off Final Fantasy XIII as one to to sort of give it the boost in the uh, in the voting. Mm. So I'm all over that. And I know Nicky Wilson will be as well because he loves a good bit of Final Fantasy. Uh, I couldn't, I'd just been on to CEX. I could only get um, Final Fantasy XIII and XIII 2. Yeah. So I got them for eight quid. Well, it's thirteen minus two, isn't it? So technically, shouldn't it be Final Fantasy Eleven? Oh, it might even be a prequel. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, but but Lightning Returns has sold out. So I have to leave. It doesn't matter though. I can probably pick it up from somewhere. Yeah, it's probably everybody going on and booking it. Yeah, it is. So I've got the first two, and because if I remember rightly, the first one was in, on three discs. So how that will work? Or maybe they'll just let you put one disc in and then download the whole game. That's how it'll work because that's I think that's how it worked on Mass Effect too. Mm. And I'm not sure if it did the same for Blue Dragon as well. Yeah, when that was done. But yeah, there was plenty to see in that. Um, as I say, it's back on again tonight at nine. But if you're listening to this now, you've missed it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I think they're just going to be doing... I don't think it's going to be as in-depth, this next one. Mm. So... There was also the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Yes. Um, and they were showing you some, some of the charities that they were working with that's been bringing um, gaming to, to disabled and, and, you know, kids and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, can you give anything else that was involved? Uh, yeah, Black Friday. If you've seen those really horrible adverts starring, well, do you know, uh, but do you know, Rachel Nelson. I even put a point on Facebook saying that that was very cringeworthy. I think it was deliberately done that, but way. it was because he's a great fan of. If you well over here, we have something else there, but you know, the price is right. Yeah. So he's a big fan of that, and obviously that was where he was coming from for what he was doing with that sort of idea. So as much as it was so cheesy and cringeworthy, that I think that was, you know, just something it was doing. But it be interesting to see what comes out on that. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Probably there's nothing... Well, Tomb Raider I haven't got yet, but, you know, I might even wait until next year for that. Um, what else? Oh, the keyboard and mouth support. Forgot to mention that, didn't we? I just say that, yeah. Oh, sorry, I sorry, yeah. forgot. And that's that's for selected games. I don't know which games. They haven't mentioned any games yet. But, uh, yeah, they have. The I think there was 11 on the list. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, Razer are doing the keyboards, and they're obviously their lit keyboards, and there's going to be, like, designer schemes to go with the lighting on the keyboard, hmm. which would be very cool. I'm going to have to get a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to, to go to go with my nice glowing one here. Oh, the one that crashes? No, the one that doesn't crash because I've got a Logitech G203 oh, okay. now. Hmm. Uh, I got rid of the uh, K, whatever it was, the uh, Corsair one, which was causing me all the problems. Well, not the keyboard, the software was causing me all the problems. Hmm. Okay. Um, but, yeah. There was also a few other games. There was Void Bastards. I wasn't going to say that word, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, to be honest, we're, we're, we're not swearing for the sake of swearing. That is the name of the game. It is, yeah. It is. Yeah, so uh, they also talked about Devil May Cry 5's Void Mode and also a bit about how the char- the main character's got this bionic arm. <clears throat> mm. um, yeah, so there was, a, there was a few different other bits that were in the show as well. They also talked about Winter of Arcade's... Uh, coming back as oh, well. I, did, I missed that bit. Maybe I, I did, maybe when I popped out to get a drink. Yeah. Um, but also there's uh, $100 or £70 off the price of consoles at the moment as well. Mm. So uh, the X is like a hundred, uh, 70 quid cheaper in this country or 100 
over in uh, America. Yeah, I wonder if they bring those deals over here. Yeah, they are, £70. Oh, they are? Oh, OK, sorry. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's uh, quite a lot that was uh, in there. There's going to be further Black Friday reductions t- uh, for games, and that I think some games are like 50% off, mm. uh, if not more. Um, yeah, so lots <clears throat> to announce in terms of that as a show. Yeah, wasn't there a Sid, Sid Meier civilization as well they were talking about? I remember seeing they that. They were talking the about some sort of strategy, but I don't remember what that one was, mm. to be honest, because I thought, I looked at it, I thought, does it look as good as PC? No, I think it was it was one of the civilizations, I think, that's coming either back compat or something, but uh, yeah. Oh, well, it'll be the dumbed down version then, won't it? Well, it's not so much dumbed down, but, you know, it's a bit more accessible than the PC version. Well, if you've got a the, keyboard the and mouse... No, I mean the 360 version. Because oh, okay. that's the only one that could actually, could actually go on the X, mm. or uh, Xbox One, without a new game. Yeah. So... <clears throat> okay, so more news. We have a Battle.net group. So, uh, do we? Cre- yeah, we it's do. First, first time I've heard about it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've just created it today, that's why. And I did put it in a note, so you obviously didn't read the notes. <laughs> so, yeah, so if you're a PC player and you're on Battle.net, so there, or if you're on to play an Overwatch or whatever, I'm sure I think you can uh, join in through the game. Uh, we have a Battle.net or Battle.net group uh, on there, so come along and join the fun. Um, other than that, N7 Day. Have you heard about this? I saw one thing. Now, I, I saw your text about this Bioware um, hint. I've not seen it anywhere. So where would you? Where did you find that? What the? Uh, what Bioware is looking at doing? Yeah. Uh, well, it was. Uh, it's basically a bit of speculation. But uh, Bioware have released a, a video mm. that um, is their staff talking about. Um, the new oh, sorry, about N seven, and about yeah. what N what it means to be N seven. You know, it's like one of those sort of like semi cheesy kind of videos, really. Yeah. Uh, but one <clears throat> of the things that they uh, were hinting at, and this has been uh, since further explored, is uh, the fact that um, they've we were talking in the video about you know it's about you know, exploring different worlds and stuff like that. And it's about the future of the Mass Effect, or, or what What will the next Mass Effect game be? Mm. So I think in all likelihood, I don't think it'll be this gen that we'll see another Mass Effect game. Oh, God knows. But no. I do think, because obviously Anthem is next year in February, so they're not going to release a Mass Effect no. game that's going to go in competition with that. No, I did I did see, though, um, some pictures of some N7 gear for, for Anthem. Yeah. So those different bots that you can, that you have, uh, those robots, whatever you want to call them, there is some sweet little N7 gear that you can wear. Yeah. Which look pretty cool. Yeah, that is quite cool. Um, but I, I do... You know, I, I do think that we're not going to see the end of Mass Effect, and I think this is the first time that they've publicly released, you know, the fact that they are still yeah. considering Mass Effect because what was it six months ago they said no, nope, it's dead. So to see that coming around, maybe that was like a shock tactic. I don't know, but anyway, let's just hope and let's hope in the interim that they actually give us a remaster of the Mass Effect trilogy. That would be quite cool as well. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. And there's one more thing you've got there. This is the other reason to put mixed box on. <laughs> yes, because they have all Spyware have also released uh, enhancements to Andromeda for the X, 4K support, etc., etc., HDR, all of that sort of thing. And I noticed I went on. I went on to uh, turn the Xbox on and saw what had just been downloaded on on the background. Yeah, <clears throat> and I saw that Mass Effect was on there, so I, I turned it on. I haven't a clue where I am in the game, to be honest. But it did look nice, must admit. Yeah, it, it I, does. It looks beautiful in 4K. Yeah, and I was just standing outside, uh, at st- standing outside the ship in, in on a base, and um, yeah, it looked pretty cool. I say. Yeah. 
if we get bored and there's nothing to play, I could always start that again. <laughs> I, don't think uh, I, could, I don't think I could play from it at the point I'm at now because I've not played it for so long. I wouldn't have a clue what I'm doing. Well, do you know what? The Spider-Man, the heist DLC mm. has uh, released as well a couple of weeks ago. And as soon as that release, I thought, right, Spider-Man back on, went in and started playing it, died straight away. Couldn't remember the controls. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only been a couple of weeks. I was hammering that game. I had platinum dip, I and I can't, can't remember can't, how to play it. I can't believe that you couldn't play it. Yet. <laughs> no, I couldn't remember because I'd got my head so into Assassin's Creed, hmm. it had sort of like completely overwrote all of my muscle memory for Spider Man. Yeah. Crazy. Because I've still been playing Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I wanted a one k but I'm just struggling with it at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay, where are we up to now then? Well, now we're on to the new releases, so do you want to do those, Steve? Okay, because <clears throat> I can see those where I can't read the charts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll start with the 13th of the 11th. We've got Hitman 2, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC from Warner Brothers. Also, we've got Spyro, Reignited Trilogy, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. From the 14th, we have Chimp Party, which is the PlayLink game on the PlayStation 4, Sony. Just Deal With It, another PlayLink game, again, from for the PS4. Knowledge is Power Decades, which I think is, is that more of the same? I'm not too sure. It's a PlayLink one, yeah. Because uh, there's already a Knowledge is Power already on this. That might be an, an extra one they've added. So that, again... On it, well, it is because Knowledge is Power is the one that's on there. Decades is another one. Yeah. Which which has always been a it's been a one to download for free at the moment. Um, <clears throat> of course, Fallout seventy six all on all formats from Bethesda. We've got World Hunters again, another PlayLink game. All these coming just before Christmas, believe it or not. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, we got we got seven inch Scarlet on the Vita, and this is from the sixteenth onwards. We've got um, Aragami. Shadow Edition on the Switch from Merge Games. Fortnite Deep Freeze Bundle on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Switch from Warner Brothers. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee on the Switch from Nintendo. Psychedelia of the Ashen Hawk and Psychedelia of the Black Butterfly, both on the Vita from Askes. Sid Meier's Civilization 6 on the Switch from 2K. And we've got SNK 40th Anniversary Collection from the, on the Switch from NIS of America. And last but not least, we've got Trailblazers, PS4 and the Switch from Rising Games on the 16th as well. There we go. Plenty okay. there. Indeed. And the charts for this week, we have Spider-Man coming back into the top five. No doubt because of the heist DLC, people going back and buying that again. Uh, Forza Horizon 4 at number four, staying in position and to be honest, the rest of it's all staying in position. So FIFA at three, COD Black Ops four at two, and still holding them all off is Red Dead Redemption two. Rightly so. Indeed. So, <coughs> Steve, what have you been playing in Red, De Red Dead Redemption two this week? <laughs> <laughs> That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So RDR, as it's called, and yeah, so I've started Chapter 3, and I haven't really done any of the main story. Yeah. I've just been roaming around, doing some, some you know, getting some pelts of different um, different animals. I actually, I actually ventured into St. Denise, which is like um, in the bayou and all that. Yeah. Plenty of crocodiles running around there, you've got to be careful, and snakes. I've got a snake bitten as well, and lucky enough I had some... <clears throat> snake oil to cure that but there's one little story I want to, I want to share because as I say as we know this is a fantastic game there's so much to do in it and some of the things that you pick up and these little just these little stories that you deal with on a, a, a very tiny quest and I come across this guy screaming in the woods and he got caught in a bear trap so he said oh can you take me I can't do anything so I opened up the bear trap I took him back to the doctors mm -hmm. took him in there through the door she come this way Put him on the on the uh, on this sort of ch chair that's on like a dentist chair, so it's quite high up. So he put him there with his with his arm, which is all mangled. He said, "Right, you better leave now. Let me get on with this because it's going to be a bit gruesome." I thought, "I'm not going to leave. I'm going to watch." <laughs> and he cut the man's arm off. 
did a, <laughs> took it right off, right in front of my eyes. I couldn't believe it. The amount of depth in the game is unreal, isn't it? Honestly, I could. I was jaw open here thinking, what am I witnessing here? And he was sitting there with his sword, giving it all of that. It was hard work getting through the bone. Blood going everywhere. Hey, just mental. Absolutely mental. It's, I, I'm listening to other people's stories that they're getting on to, and it's, you know, there was actually quickly another one where I, I stopped a, a fight in the, in this bar in, in St. Denis, and this woman was with, this woman had, I presume it was her, probably her son, and he looked like um, a bit of a freak, if you're with me. Yeah. And he, he sounded like, you know, do you remember in The Goonies? Do you remember the, the creature in that? Yes. It was like that sort of... He was a little bit gross. Not gross, but he's a little bit deformed slightly. Okay. And um, I had to break up this fight and had to fight this guy who was a... I presume it's her son, probably. And um, and he's all talking very dumbed down and dyslexic and what have you. And she said, oh, can you look out for um, the magician? He, he, he should be with us. I don't know where he's got to. And she's giving it all that with her accent. And I go and look for him. He's this little midget. <laughs> I found in the in the forest, and he can. He's like he's like a he's sort of the, a magician that he uses a lot of sparks and dust to glow green and blue and what have you. Mm. And I had to track him down and, and get hold of him. And he kept. I, I thought, well, I'll do this. I won't do this on the on the horse because I'm about to trample him if I get close to him. And I don't want to do that in the quest. So um, I was running around trying to trying to get him with me lasso, but uh, just kept following him. Got to the end of it and. Uh, then his mum turned up. Well, his mum turned up. His partner turned up, and that, and uh, all was well. That ends well. But it was just these little stories are great. I mean, it just takes so much to do with them. Uh, it's just it's crazy. It's crazy, and I just love it so much. And but have you been playing it? Because you've not been doing much with Red Dead. No, I haven't. To be honest, because I've still been trying to f- finalise uh, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> We well, see, I think you need to probably take a break from that, though, to be honest. I think I probably do. But I'm still enjoying it so much. That's the uh, main thing with that. Yeah, yeah. And especially now, I'm sort of like a slither off level 50. But, yeah, the, the level the level works in that game. It's very slow going, isn't it? Grinding at, at one oh, point. Oh, exceedingly. I mean, you know, when you, when you think about what would sort of like give you like a tenth when you get to level 48, 49, would, like, yeah. knock you up two or three levels at the mm. beginning. Yeah. You know, in terms of XP. Yeah, yeah, very difficult. Um, so I've got Game Pass back again now. And I downloaded Forza Horizon 4, which did yep. a couple of weeks ago now. And pretty much been hammering. But what I did was I bought an expansion that makes mine up to the Ultimate Edition. Okay. So I've got the James Bond pack, VIP, all the extra cards, and both DLC. Right. So at some point, if I ever got rid of Game Pass, I just did, all, all I would need to do would be buy the basic Forza, and I would yeah. still have the Ultimate Edition. Cool. Uh, the Bond cards are brilliant. I don't know if you've seen these at all. I've seen the pictures of them, but I haven't seen them in play. I, mm. I mean, can you hear the Bond theme going on in the background or anything? No, but I think you need to do that yourself. Right. Like I, I did. I, I ended up getting a memory stick with a load of Bond themes on it. Okay. And playing them in the background. <laughs> but uh, I had a lot of fun because what you can do is, is, with some of them, you can go and get the upgrades. So I don't know if you saw my picture of the uh, the Lotus Elite. Yeah. From, uh, oh, which one is it now? Come on, you should tell me. The Spy You Love Me. Thank you. And it's got all the fins out and the propellers at the back on it. Yeah. Uh, it looks great when you're going in the sea. <laughs> can you go under the water? Well, you can go. Uh, you you can't go literally under. You can't. It's not like that much involved. But you can. I can go in the sea, and it does cover the car. But you've got. You know, it just looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. And uh, yeah, really been really enjoying it. I've hammered the achievements a bit. I say I've been working on the on the story, as in with all the different parts that you go to to open up the map. Um, there's a lot of stuff on there, but yeah, we're just pretty much enjoying it. Mm. See, that's something we could do together because you've got that, haven't you? Well, yeah, because I've got it on Game Pass as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, last but not least, just quickly, Destiny. I never have a, got a bit of Destiny in the week. And it was an exotic, I was just say, actually, first, no, I actually got my first piece of exotic armor. Believe it or not, how long has it been out? 
for Forsaken. It's, take, it's taken this long to just it's, drop. It's taken you two or three months. Yeah, because it is harder to get exotics in the game now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I picked up a bit of a bit of armor this week. Um, also, there's a new quest from Amanda in the tower. Um, this is a, a, a quest that's going to be going for a few weeks. Cause it's, it's going to be in parts per week. So it's been running for two weeks. I picked it up this week. Um, it's for the Thunderlord exotic. Do you remember that machine gun? I do. So there's two parts at the moment you can pick up. And next Tuesday will be part three. So if you get to do it in order, you'll be able to just do a part each week and just go, you just go and see her and she gives you the uh, quest for it. Don't have to do anything. Just pick it up. But yeah, Destiny's Destiny. Love it. Just every time I play it, it just plays so well. And just need a new fire team so I can do some stuff because I've been doing it on my own. But we'll see about that. (laughs) Well, I'll get back on it. (laughs) Anyway, so what you been up to, pal? You've been, what you've been doing? Um, well, I've been having a bit of an experimental phase, to be quite honest with you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I have uh, been playing Lords of Assassin's Creed because mm. I am really enjoying the game. And to be honest, it's just such a beautiful and relaxing game to just go around and, you know, explore. And I'm still on the thing of unlocking all of the areas in the you know, in the game and stuff like that as well. Mm. But I'm really near the... Um, the the level cap of 50. Yeah. In a matter of fact, if uh, I gave it about half an hour's gameplay, I would beat that level cap. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, probably do that in the next couple of uh, couple of nights at some point. So I've been playing that. Great game. Couldn't, you know, the, uh, this has been the best version of Assassin's Creed since 2, I think. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Really enjoyed the story, like the character. He's a little bit full of himself, especially later on in the game. Mm. But I've, I've, he's I've, still a likeable character. Oh, yeah. I have noticed, I did have an email the other day from Ubisoft. Yeah. And saying what's new this month. Yeah. So this month from November, you can discover more about your favourite character through the surprise new stories. Um, face Face new time-limited epic events apparently, yes. including a Cyclops, and win exclusive rewards. And that's with Lost Tales of Grace. Yes. So that's interesting. I don't, don't know how these, these events kick off in the world. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure either. I mean, they, they do have uh, events on going on all of the time, like, for example, a lot of the ones recently have been about <clears throat> uh, destroying legendary ships that have appeared. Yeah. Um, but my ship's on... Um, legendary on everything and an epic on a couple of different bits yeah but you know i still need to fully upgrade the ship so because you have to collect loads of resources and one of the things that's most annoying is these little tablet things that you've got to collect Mm. because they're only available in certain areas as well okay um so that that's that's a little bit of an annoyance it's going to take quite some time to to hunt down all of those sort of bits um, but other than that, you know, it's uh, the, there is a new DLC, free DLC that's dropped uh, for um, doing some sort of play where you do a reenactment. I can't remember uh, too much because I haven't gone down that storyline as of yet. But there is uh, the new DLC coming as well because there's a couple of bits of DLC for the game that are due for release. And yeah, then next yeah. year, we've got the remaster of Assassin's Creed 3, which has the least likable of all of the Assassin's Creed characters. Yes, I never got on with that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also uh, Liberation, which was the PS Vita game. Oh, okay. So it's like a, a smaller sort of, you know, normal Assassin's Creed character. But you <clears throat> play a female assassin on that one. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a few different bits with that. Uh, other games I've been playing, I've had a go... Well, I completed a game called Dream Break. Mm. Can't even remember where I picked this one up. I don't know if it was in Game Pass or what. Uh, but basically, it's a, a high-bit sort of game. and Not normally my favourites anyway. To be honest, it wasn't a very good high-bit game. I would have said it was probably like medium-low bit. <laughs> uh, but the game's basically it's set in the Cold War of Russia or that sort of world, and it's uh, 
an authoritarian state controlling people with propaganda and a brutal police force. Hmm. There's a mixture of different sort of game types in there as well, because there is uh, some like arcadey bits. So there's one, there's one bit where you've got a you know, you're flying this vehicle and you're being attacked, but it's got the most absolutely weird combat system for that bit because these sort of like police things come and start shooting your vehicle and mm. you've got this receptacle that's going round and round and round your vehicle and when it lands on one you've then got one of the police vehicles you've then got to trace the pattern that it that it shows <coughs> excuse me which would be easy enough apart from the fact that the controls are very good mm. so if you press the a button at the wrong moment it thinks you're on the other one but it's showing a pattern for a different vehicle which is really really annoying it took me ages to get past that bit not because it was hard but because the controls were so rubbish and then there's another one where you're flying like this um sort of like flying rocket bike for want of a better term and you have to shoot stuff and avoid obstacles hmm not challenging in the slightest and to be honest both of those bits of the game are really they can be quite frustrating i didn't find a rocket cycle bit what that frustrating but other than that you know it it's not very good oh sorry there, there is another bit that's uh, frustrating is you go into this like tank thing that fires upwards mm. and then you go into this sort of pseudo space invaders sort of environment where you've got to shoot all of these ships that are coming down in a like a zigzaggy motion in order to clear the way for you to move on to the next sort of stage and come out of the vehicle it's a very strange mishmash of styles to be honest some of which don't really make sense one of the quite interesting ways that they've done it is that there are um, loads of records to collect which are records of the soundtrack of the game yeah. and when you've com- collected them all you can go at the main menu and then choose the soundtrack and play the, that particular song from oh, okay. the record collection which is quite a neat, neat way of doing it to be honest it mm. kind of makes having a collectibles bit have a point or so I thought anyway I thought that was a, a more novel way of doing it uh, other than that to be honest the, when you're doing shooting combat Mm. There is no challenge in it at all. There's a couple of arcade machines that you've uh, got to um, use in the game. And it's so easy to get 100% because all that you do is hold down the left trigger and then just keep spamming the right trigger to shoot because the left trigger gives you a shield, but you can shoot through your shield. Yeah. So, so there is no challenge in the combat at all. I, I sailed. <laughs> well, no, that's how it's supposed to be played. And I sailed right the way through the combat, easy as anything. Mm. It was pretty rubbish, to be quite honest. It is an indie title. It's on Xbox, PC, and PS4. To be honest, what I would say is, it's going to be a waste of your time. It's you, you're not really going to find anything enjoyable about it. Well, it's not always. Easy. Some of these titles are pretty good, and then the one you find isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't yeah, great? this is one of the worst ones that I've played, to be honest. But well, personally, I did not enjoy it at all. I don't think it relayed the story very well uh, or whatever. The The interesting thing about this game is it has three endings. And when you've completed one ending, you go back to the main menu, just click continue, and then you can do the second two. So yeah. you don't even have to restart the whole campaign. So anyway, that's that game. So Dream Break... I will put it on the avoid list. <laughs> Second game yeah. I played, and I did a bit of streaming of this, is Tomb, oh, sorry, Rise of the Tomb Raider VR. Okay, that's on augmented PC. reality, was it? Uh, the Windows MR, yeah, mixed okay. reality. Yeah. Which is, to be honest, it's not mixed reality, it's just VR. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I tried this, and I did stream it as well, because... I think, to be honest, one of the things I've been doing is avoiding using my VR headset on my PC because my graphics card was a 970, which was the base for doing VR. Mm. But now I've got a 1080. That's sort of like the higher end. It's not the highest end, but it's it's up there. 
So I've been trying a few more VR games. Okay. And uh, anyway, I thought I'd try this. So this is really quite different for um, a, v- for a Tomb Raider game because when you put the headset on mm. and you're playing the game, you're actually playing it as Lara. You're not doing it third person. Oh, okay. So you just got the hands in and everything. No, you don't see the hands or anything. When you look at stuff, you know how you used to, you you know you get the uh, symbol to say look at this or interact with this or whatever. Yeah, you just get that up when you go up to stuff. What I did find a couple of things. First off, I couldn't figure out how to make her run, and she walks quite slow. <laughs> so <laughs> that that was a bit of a frustration to be honest. Yeah, not a massive one. But basically what you're doing is it's not the full game. You're exploring Croft Mansion. So there's two ways to play. You can either do the warp version or you can do the walking. You start off, you're forced down the warp sort of, you know, route to play the game. Mm. And then you can later on switch it over to just normal movement using a controller. Okay. It's... <clears throat> Was it worth it? Was it worth the time spending on it to do do this? Was it, or is it just? Do you feel it's a quick? They bolt this on just for a bit of VR. And to, well, I mean, to be honest, it was quite interesting what they were doing mm. in terms of it. It made it a bit of a different sort of VR. <coughs> so it's dry and heat today. A bit of a different sort of VR. Uh, ex, well, so a bit of a different to radio experience, not VR experience, but a bit of a different one for Lara Croft because we've never seen a game with you know with you looking through the eyes of Lara that I can think of. Yeah. So that was you know that made it different, but um, you know at the same time it did feel a little bit bolted on. Like, mm. thought, oh, let's do something VR. And I believe that it's also on the PlayStation version uh, of Rise of the Tomb Raider as well. Mm. And it was interesting enough. It was the normal sort of Lara, you know, exploring her mansion sort of thing. It looked very effective in VR. But what I would say is it did make me feel a bit queasy, even though of the, the calibre of equipment that I'm running it off. Right. Um, so if you're going to run this on a, or try to run this on a 970, I think it'll probably struggle, you know, even if you turn down all of the graphic quality. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, maybe just, you know, consider it if you're on lower end gear, to be quite mm. honest. But, it was interesting, you know. That that's about what I would say. It 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 wasn't sort of like action packed or anything. I only went well. I can't remember how long it was that I actually went through through that. Uh, I certainly did longer than the seventeen minutes it says on the stream. Mm. But uh, it did feel like a long time what I was playing it. But I was it was only about half an hour or forty minutes, something like that. <coughs> so yeah. That's uh, you know that was that game. A different game entirely was Hellblade. Send you a sacrifice VR. So how was that? <clears throat> this is not advertised as a VR game, is it? Uh, no, it's a separate game. They've they've released a separate version of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you had, well, I had this on the PC, and uh, you get it for free. Oh, that's all right. So I w- I was just flicking through my Steam library as you do trying to find a game that I wanted to play that was just the right sort of game for the mood I'm in. The problem is, if I had four games in there, I'd know exactly what I want to play. As I've got a thousand games in there, I don't know what I want to play. Don't they send you updates with games that they've added to your Steam library sometimes or not? Because that might no. make it easier, wouldn't it? No, they don't. That's the other thing that's quite frustrating. Hmm. But anyway, I was looking through my Steam library, came across this, I thought, oh, hey, but I never saw this. And then I noticed it was for Oculus and Vive. And I thought, well, that's really good considering I got Windows MR. And I thought, I wonder if it plays on MR. So I did a bit of research and evidently it did, but it's just not advertised. Mm. So I thought, okay, let's power this up. Got the headset on, started playing it. And it is the game. It's not a different game. It's the game. Right. So how did you find that? Because that is an intense game in its own way, isn't it? It is. 
it is very intense. So I played with it with a normal Xbox One controller. Mm. I didn't play it using the uh, you know the Windows MR controllers because, to be honest, I just didn't fancy the hurdle of trying to figure out if you can even use it with those what those movements would be or where it was because obviously using the xbox one controller you have muscle memory about where the buttons are but i don't know my way around the windows mr controllers half as well Mm. so i thought right okay let's play normal xbox one controller with the headset and uh played it for about an hour or so uh you know went through the first opening bit and uh, through you know one of the evil you know one of the first doors and took on the fire uh demon thing that uh, is in there mm. which you know that and that's about as far as I went um but plays exactly the same as the normal version of uh hellblade the difference is just just the visuals really i mean it's to me when i was looking at it I was looking, I was thinking the graphical quality looks slightly lower than any of the 2D versions of the game. Well, by 2D, I mean TV, I don't mean it's 2D. But we do get that, we do get that with some VR games that they are a little bit down on graphical. Yeah, but to be honest, when I started analysing it, I was looking and I was thinking, I think the reason it doesn't look quite as good. And it's only very, mar- you know, quite is it, marginal. Is it because it's, it's, it's a dark game? As in- no, it's not. It's because you're closer to the textures, if you see what I mean. Hmm. Because you can get right close. You can look right at the textures. You know, by bending down and looking down, you can see, you know, you can, like, for example, in the opening bit where you're on the boat on the lake, you're paddling, hmm. yeah? Um, and effectively speaking, sorry, I've got coughs today. Effectively speaking, you're, um, what, ab- about a foot and a half, two feet away from Senua, whereas you feel further away when you're playing it on a normal game. And you kind of feel like you're halfway down her back at that bit as well. Mm. So it's sort of like, you know, you're like looking, peering over her shoulder. And when you look down, where you would expect your body to be, you're thinking, oh, actually, there's boat or a log that's been chiselled out. So that, you know, so I th- I think the reason why some of the graphics don't look quite as good is more because of your proximity to them rather than anything else. Okay. Yeah. Now, in terms of the uh, system requirements for this, don't even bother looking at it unless you've got a 1080 because the minimum system requirements are a 1080 graphics card, you know, an NVIDIA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or a RX 580. So th- those are the, the minimum specs for it. And also, you would also need an i5-3570 or an FX-8350 th- uh, to play it on VR, which is horrendously high specs. For a you know for a PC game, your standard sort of like you know 1060 laptops mm. just not going to be able to cope with it. What I would say is frame rate. The only time I felt queasy, only time, was through my own stupidity. Basically, um, you don't have the smooth movement. You know how on the right thumbstick you've got the look around movement, which is quite smooth. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of changes the direction of the camera angle. It's more jumpy on the uh, the VR version, and there was times when rather than flipping the view by you know pulling backwards or forwards, whichever way it was, I can't remember. Um, instead of doing that, I was sort of like right, 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 several times, and I was jerking around, <laughs> which made that sort of like jumpy view which is what gives you the motion sickness because, you know, it's where, you know, I was basically, I was almost simulating frame drop off because of the way that I was playing it. And when I realised what I was doing, I stopped doing that and I never felt any more sickness at all. And I could play this for an hour easy, you know, as a result of that. That's not bad, is it? No, it's not. One thing I did find is in terms of the combat, because I've played this game that much now, the combat, you know, I, I play it on hard. I don't mm. play it on normal. 
Um, but because I couldn't see my hands or I wasn't aware of where my hands were with the controller, even though I knew I was holding it up and it was right in front of my face and I should be able to see the controller in my periphery vision, because I couldn't see see that, I felt slightly disorientated when I was doing the combat and my combat ability suffered as a result, which is really, really weird. I don't understandable, but yeah. weird. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, sometimes tackling a character in th- in in 3D. Yeah. Ain't as easy as doing it in 2D. Yeah. Th- this is definitely a game where playing it in 2D is easier, but even though the graphic fidelity looks slightly less mm. on the VR version, it still looks so fantastic. It's worth trying it in, in VR if you can. And I mean, yeah. r- r- seriously, because... You know the bits where it, you know, where she sort of like looks into the camera and stuff like that. You can get right into her face, mm. and you know, looking at, you know, looking around, around, you know, around her and whatever else it is. And also, the <clears> other <throat> thing that sort of impressed on me was, you know, these monsters that sort of like appear out of a cloud. Mm. Yeah, and then start attacking you. You know they look tall, but because you're doing it in VR and you're seeing everything in 3D, you suddenly realise how much bigger these monsters actually are. It gives you a different sense of scale and perspective. Okay. Um, and obviously, Senua's, you know, uh, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is renowned for the fact that it doesn't give you a hub but it, the hub is actually oral through the voices in Senua's head. And my God, you know, that that level of immersion added on to the VR makes it a very different ex- experience, mm. which is you know, well worth actually trying. So if you do have a PC that's uh, good enough and you've got this on PC or Senua, then you should have Senua VR, as well, or Hellblade VR as well. Stick it on and have a go because uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how good it is. Oh, sweet. If there's anybody out there with it, should, um, <clears throat> dive in. Yeah, and if you want to see what it looks like in terms of the quality of the graphics, have a look at my YouTube account because um, I did actually do direct recording for that. There's no videos of me prancing about with the headset mm. on or anything like that. It's just a capture of what I saw from the uh, Windows MR screen. But, uh, yeah, you'll be able to see, you know, exactly what was on, what was on there and uh, how good it looks. And it still looks fantastic. It's yeah. just not quite as good as all of the, the different versions. Oh, and I, I actually, I went on to the PlayStation version <laughs> afterwards to try that version. Mm. Um you know, just to see if my recollection was different, but it wasn't. So, yeah, really, you know, for for a, a, a game that was given to me by the developer, because, you know, I already had the non-VR version, this is you know, a fantastic game. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, do you think it would come to PlayStation 4? I hope so. I hope so. I don't I know whether it. or not the, P- the standard vanilla PS will be... Powerful enough to play it in VR, though. I wonder if the Pro would. It'd be interesting if it did. I'd like to give it a go to see what it's like. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You should come on a holiday up here, mate, and then you could be able to test it out with my rig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, I've been down to see you now. It's your turn up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're only going down there to, see, to, to pick up a dog. I also came to meet you as well, so I'll yeah. say hello to you. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway... <laughs> All right, so yeah, so that's uh, that's my gaming. So unless you've got anything else to add, then we'll. Um, go not really. No, I should be okay. I think. Okay. Well, in that case, then we'll go on to movies, TV, and streaming. In quest of a better life. Okay, so we have news. Several bits of news, in a matter of fact. Hmm. First off. Bond news. So we know from uh, Eon Productions that we are not going to see 
a female Bond, but... Ray, Ray. Ray, thank God for that. There's no more sex changes for a male character to be female. However, if you remember a while ago, there was a forerunner for Bond who dropped off the scales, evidently, uh, because Idris Elba was uh, quite advertised as being one, and then there's also been several other people since uh, him as well. Well, according to The Express, Tom Hiddleston is once again the odds-on favourite to replace Daniel Craig uh, as the next James Bond. So, And he's beating off stiff competition at the moment from Richard Madden, and uh, Idris Elba, um, and, but there's also popular picks of uh, Cillian Murphy and Aidan Turner, a names that have been tossed around as well. Not mm. sure what the first one of those two is, but <coughs> no, no. Um, anyway, I just thought that was really quite interesting because if you remember, I'd actually said I think the next Bond will be Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, I saw. I think I saw that on Facebook today. Apparently, um, they're going to see it today. Yeah. But um, with the other news that he's going to be get, could be getting his own spin-off show with Disney, would that hamper it at all? Do you think? Not as long as they can meet this uh, schedules. And don't forget, Daniel Craig's already committed to at least one more Bond. Please let it not be two. It depends on the. It might depend on the takings, maybe on that. Well, to, I mean, to be quite honest, it'll, if he carries on, it'll be James. You know, James Bond, and he is my bus pass. Mm. He's getting too old. Hate to say it. I know he's. You know, he's only a few years older than me, but he's he's getting too old for Bond. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think Tom Hiddleston's got that. Might have that British look. I I think he does. I I think he does. So yeah, that'd be interesting. I say. They won't say this. This would be floating around for quite a while still. I think they won't announce anything just yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. we've we've got to get the next Daniel Craig movie out of the way first, haven't we? Yeah, I think they haven't started shooting it yet, have they? I don't think they have not yet. No, not yet, because there's been all of the Danny Boyle controversy and changing directors and all of that, haven't they? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there hasn't it? Yeah. So, uh... so there is a new director that's been. Uh, recruited for that, I can't remember the name, but I think don't think filming starts until February, if I remember rightly. Mm. Which is interesting, seeing as I suppose, think it's supposed to be released at the end of the year. That would give them a lot of time. <laughs> well, they can always delay it. They normally do, don't I, they? I suppose with Bond as well, if they're doing most of it with practical effects, then it most of it is shooting time, isn't it? Mm. And editing. So, anyway. Second bit of news. Do you want to do this second bit of news, or shall I? Go on, I'll, let you, I'll do the last one. Okay, so, latest news is Michelle Yeoh, who uh, is uh, Captain Philippa Giorgio in Star Trek Discovery, looks like she's going to be uh, setting up her own spin-off show for her character. Um, so the this untitled show would further explore... Uh, Giorgio's connection to the United Federation of Planets uh, security agency known as Section 31. Um, evidently, Section 31 is going to be quite, you know, front and centre of the next Star Trek uh, discovery as well. Mm. Whether or not CBS All Access uh, will actually order the series will really be determined on whether or not your... Um, you know, can be uh, sort of like budgeted in, as uh, she's already committed to uh, Discovery second series and, and also the uh, potential Crazy Rich Asians sequel. Well, she's got a lot on her plate, hasn't she? She has, but to be honest, I would love to see a show with her. You know, like a, a Star Trek spin-off. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it, if I'm presuming this, this would go with Netflix as well and and CBS. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, she's quite she's quite a good character. I mean, she's she's gonna be busy in in Discovery anyway. Yeah, and she's a really good actress as well. Yeah, yeah, she is absolutely. So so fingers all, crossed. All these hearsay, we, we, you know, when we get them to hear that they're announced, it'd be really it'd be nice to see that. Well, I mean, you know, we heard it hearsay about Patrick Stewart's Star Trek as well. Yeah, that's true. So can't wait for that. <laughs> Give this so much. Yeah. To but, boldly go where no man has gone before again. <laughs> yeah, boldly go. Yeah, very yes. true, very true. <laughs> right, so the last bit of news, 
Um, I was quite chuffed about it, to be honest, because I, I really do do like him as as a as an actor. Yeah. So John Barrowman has confirmed that he's returning to Arrow later in season seven. Yes. Now at Supernova, which is a Comic Con in Brisbane, Australia, John Barrowman told the crowd during a panel that he'd expect to see him back as Malcolm Merlin on the DC show. Now I thought his legs would have got blown off in that last time we saw him. But don't forget, because of DC's Legend of Tomorrow and all of the time travel back and forth and all of that, it's not necessarily going to be uh, the character you know that after what happened in the you know the last season of Legends was it Legends of Tomorrow that it was fighting against it was wasn't it so you know he might be like at some point intermediate in between when he was on Arrow and on Legends who knows yeah but they well he may well have been able to jump pretty high off that uh that landmine he was standing on at the end of season six will be well also don't forget he what, what was it the Lazarus pit maybe he was like restored through that again who knows? Who knows? But yeah, it'd be nice to. See. I do like him as a character, and I've I've not started. I've got a couple of episodes to watch of Arrow now, so I've not really got into it yet. Yeah, the same with all the others. I've only I've only watched a bit of Flash. So Legends is awful this season. I know. I've I've saw the I saw the um, comments on Facebook. Fairy Godmothers, unicorns. Yeah, I started watching episode one. Yeah. Um, but I did turn off. Mrs. fell asleep. I th- anyway. Do you know what? I, th- I think that you've actually answered it yourself there. I started watching. Yeah. You didn't watch. No. And once upon a time, you would not, even if your missus had a fallen asleep, you'd have watched it and then, revert, then just gone back to the bit where she fell asleep the next Probably. time. Probably. I mean, yeah. I will go back to it. because I will, I will watch it, and even if it's just something's on the TV at the same time. But we'll, we'll see. It's... Um, a bit disappointing because especially now we've got uh, an, a new, an extra character in there in yeah. Constantine who I do adore anyway. Uh, but maybe the character's interaction might be a bit more better than the stories. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. just not sold on it. I think it's a shame because it's had a, a big dip in quality, I think, as the show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, quality well. writing, I mean. Excuse me, yeah. But it, it could be a number of reasons, couldn't it? It could. It could. Okay. Anyway, do you want to do the cinema releases? Yes, so 16th of November we have I'm going to just go backwards here because there's a reason for this. So Siberia the first movie, then we've got Hellfest Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grimwald, which I'm hoping to go and see Yeah, I'm, hop- I'm hoping to get my son watching the first Fantastic Beasts and then take him to see this Yeah, because you were just getting him into Harry Potter weren't you? Oh, we've watched another one we watched Prisoner of uh, Azkaban because these are because these are pre Harry Potter. It'd be good to see these before the. <laughs> it, it sets up characters or so, a couple of characters at least, isn't it? Which, yeah. Um, which season those? And the last film is Suspiria, which is the remake of Dario Argento's Italian horror movie. Um, it's I don't I think it's only in a few places. This is not mainstream cinema. This is being shown. I'm not too sure. But I, I have picked up the um, the remastered of the original, which I've yet to watch, actually. I've not had time yet. Yeah. Which I'll try and watch as I watch a movie next week. Because the problem is, even though I don't have a lot of watched TV this week, I do watch bits and bobs when I'm at work. And I keep going back to watching Ten and Brave, which is one of his other movies, and I just love that movie. But yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. DVD and Blu-ray. That's up to you. Okay, DVD and Blu-ray. So... The picks of the plethora of ones that we've got coming out. American Dad, Volume 13 on DVD. Braveheart, 4K Blu-ray. I'm a bit confused about this, why this is appearing in this list. I don't know if it's a special edition or whatever, but I'm sure we've had that before. Mm. Just like I'm sure that we've had First Blood Blu-ray, 4K and DVD as well. There's also The Incredibles 2. On... Maybe it's just, maybe these are, I think there might have been a bundle, so these might be single releases, maybe? Maybe, possibly, I don't know. But there's The Incredibles 2 on all formats, as well as The Incredibles 2 movie collection on Blu-ray and DVD. Mrs. Brown's Boys Christmas Surprises and Christmas Package are out there, if you like that. Quatermass and the Pit. Classic. Yeah. 
for Rambo First Blood Part 2, Blu-ray 4K DVD, Rambo for, uh, Part 3, uh, normal all formats as well. Sherlock Season 1 on Blu-ray and also the comedy I love, Trolley Season 7. Yeah, not my cup of tea. No, but hey, we, you know, we have differences. No, I know we do. And something yeah. else you're not mentioning, their cliffhanger. Oh, yes, I missed that one, didn't I? And that's restored, so I presume that's upgraded to 4K. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So what we need next is the Rocky movies. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't want to watch Rocky movies again. because uh, Do you know why? I why? borrowed the complete set of mm. all of the Rocky movies from a friend of mine, yeah? Yeah. Put them on, watch them. I'm not kidding you. When I finished watching, um, what was the last one? Rocky Balboa, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I finished watching that one, I got a really bad case of conjunctivitis to the point, you know, I had to go to hospital and all that. Mm. And I, I, both of my eyes, and my eyes were sort of like popped out of my head, and it looked like it'd been ten rounds with <laughs> Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. Yeah. So it's sort of like just, every I'm, time I see about Rocky now, I just think of conjunctivitis. I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, you're there, and he's going, cut me, mate, cut me. Yeah, <laughs> you, what, right. you know, it's like, what have you been doing to your eyes? I've been watching Rocky. <laughs> oh, actually, what I'm thinking, what am I thinking? Conjunctivitis. Where, where is that in a movie? Um, oh yeah, the Jack Black movie. Yeah. With uh, what's the name from you know, from the Avenger movies and that? Yeah, where she where he sees her as slim when she's large. Yeah, I think what it what it's got oh Jack shallow Black. Pale, that's it. <laughs> yeah, the Jack <laughs> Black movie. Yeah, yeah. And, and he doesn't want to see any covers his eyes in in the uh, in something to say he's got conjunctivitis. Yeah, and it's Gwyneth Paltrow. He sees Gwyneth Paltrow as Gwyneth Paltrow as she looks to us. Yeah, but she's actually sort of like a ten ton mega elephant sort of. It is a good movie. I still, I've got a very fond memories of watching that movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it it's a great movie, but I think it, you know, it it is one of those ones that really does have a message as well. That it's not about what people look like. Exactly. Um, just going back to Rocky, though. Have you seen Creed yet? The no. first Creed. No, because that's on Netflix. I think it's on Netflix at the moment. Anyway. Yeah. So it's worth seeing that because Creed Two comes out soon. Yes, it does. And do you know much about that? Uh, Shine light on you briefly. Yeah, go on then. So Dolph Lundgren's going to be in this. Yeah, he's returning to the franchise, isn't he? So what we're going to see is we're going to see Creed's son fighting Dolph Lundgren's son. So this will like be a revenge rematch because if you remember in Rocky Three, he killed his sorry uh, Rocky Apollo. Four. Sorry Rocky Four. Um, he killed Dolph Apollo. Lundgren. He killed Apollo in the in the ring. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. The trailer looks wicked. I, I, they really make these boxing matches look like they're a real boxing match. I mean, even though they did great choreography for the original ones, because that was you know at the time they're still great, and they really make them into like a televised event when you watch it on the on the screen. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> should I do charts? Go on in. So at five we've got Johnny English staying at five. At four, at four we have got. Smallfoot, um, from one down to three, the Nutcracker and the Four Realms. Two, from five to two, we've got a Star is Born, which is including Lady Gaga. And, of course, from two to one, we've got Bohemian Rhapsody, the Queen by a pick of Freddie Mercury. I really want to see that. I do, actually. <laughs> um, but at the moment, it might well be have to be when it comes out on disc or whatever. But um, yeah. just puts me in the mood to actually get some more Queen... Because I don't own much Queen vinyl, so um, my, my God, I'm going to a uh, got a, got a job in Warminster this week, and there's a record store called um, Raves from the Grave. All right, and they do a lot of secondhand stuff in there, and I have the good quality as well. So I might have a little sneaky look in there during this week when I'm over there. See don't what blame they got. you. Don't and blame you at all. And I want I want the Flash soundtrack. Oh, Flash Garden, own. you mean? Yeah, I, I used to own that. Yeah, but it got lost, so I might try to pick that up. While I'm in there. So. Okay. So, Blu ray and DVD charts mm. at number five, up from six is The Greatest Showman. At number four, New Entry is The First Purge. At number three, down from one, is Solo A Star Wars Story. At number two, evidently a re entry, is The Fog. Of and at number one, is Sicaro 2 
Solo Dano. Is that how he sounds it? <laughs> sounds a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> or Solo Do. Solo yeah. Sol to Do. That's I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have no idea how you pronounce that. But anyway, it's that one. Yeah, Sol cool. to Do. Okay. So Steve, what have you been watching? Not a lot. Although I did sit this afternoon and sit and watch um The Day the Earth Stood Still. I don't know why I I, I do like my classic sci fi movies. And this one is from 1951, believe it or not. Oh, yes, I it's, know the film very well. It's very old. And the the, the, the DVD I have is actually sh- is a restoration from the original, believe it or not. Even on DVD. Yeah. Because they did have a laser disc version as well at one point back in the day. But uh, actually, this film's got a good message for these days, to be honest. Yeah. About how the world is being treated and everything else and the wars. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's such a shame that the Keanu Reeves version one was nowhere near as good. (laughs) Dreadful. Do do you know what? I watched it recently. It wasn't dreadful. It just didn't live up to the original. I think Mm. if you'd have watched it without knowing the original... You'd have thought it was an average movie. Yeah. Not saying it was a good movie, so it was an average movie. It was passable, mm. but because it had so much to live up to the old one, yeah, you know, it just it, it failed and miserably. There's, and there's another one I've been meaning to actually put on again. That I've got, um, which apparently is getting a, another remake. Believe it or not, um, now I'm talking about H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Oh yeah. That was remade back in the eight. I think it was back in the nineties. That was remade. Yes, because it had Guy Pierce. It did, yeah, and not as good as the original, to be honest. It was all right, but not as classic as as, as, as the original. Uh, but I think it's being remade again. So, you know, let's see what that's going to be like. Evidently, did you know that Kylie Minogue was uh, interviewed about that and said, oh, "I understand that you're going to be on there." With the great guy Richie on war with the uh, the time machine, and she mm. said, "I should be so lucky." <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, moving on. Just, 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 <laughs> yeah, actually, just some upcoming stuff I've I've noticed because I you just talk about H.G. Wells because um, H.G. Wells, uh, we'll say Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds to start soon, and I'm going to that in December. But the BBC have done a, a drama for that as well. Yeah. Don't know when it's coming out, whether it's going to be over Christmas or not, but uh, from what I've seen of some of the the screenshots, it looks pretty cool. So I look forward to that. That should be nice. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, so I haven't really watched a lot, and I knew you've watched something that I half um, through it. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I've been continuing to watch the V series. So I've uh, started and finished V The Final Battle. Hmm. And, you know, I'm so glad that you bought this because it <laughs> spurred me on to, ba- to watching it. Yeah. And I, I had forgotten just how good this show was. Hmm. I mean, this was the TV version of Star Wars, effectively. <laughs> you know, in terms, of, in terms of quality for the time, hmm. you know, that sort of like, what, 1984, was it? Uh, 83 uh, and 84, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so completely ground groundbreaking sort of TV series. I mean, it, you know, gives an analogy of between an alien invasion and Nazi occupation, which they marry together so well. Mm. And it really gets a message across about, you know, drawing the comparisons to the Second World War. Because you, had, think, the resi- cause you had the resistance fighters, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. So, and, and I think that they took a World War Two movie or TV series, and mm. made it about alien invasion. That's what they've done, really. You know, because they've got sort of virtually goose-stepping sort of, um, you know, aliens, haven't they? Yeah, the the way, the, and yeah, because the way it's the way they actually recruit some humans to be um, recruits as well, the way Nazis did it back in the day. Yeah, so, and you know. With the with the um, with occupation and, and Hitler and everything else, it's all very yeah. Oh, v- very very much so, and also, it's the close alignment to War of the Worlds as well, right up to some of the resolution. The resolutions are quite similar if you think okay. about it. 
Yeah, yeah, we won't say what they are. We won't say what they are in case you haven't seen either of them, but <laughs> if you know, you'll see what I mean if you watch them both. Uh, although, I have to admit, the Star Child bit, which has nothing to do with War of the Worlds, was really the the low point in it. You know, the, the the end Star Child bit, I mean. Yeah. Are you on about the, the birth? <laughs> no, I'm not on about the birth. I'm not on about the birth at all. I'm on, yeah. I'm on about uh, the computer and the Star Child. That mm. bit. Okay. That, that was bad. <coughs> Excuse me. So, also, we always hear nowadays about having strong female figures and empowering women and, you know, all of that sort of thing. And the way that people go on nowadays... It's like it's something new that has been invented mm. since, you know, like 2010. I hate to tell you, but you just go and watch this series and you see just how strong the female characters are. You know, you've got uh, Juliet Parrish played by Faye Grant and Diana played by Jane Badler. Mm. And I would say that they are amongst, if not the most strongest female characters has ever been in sci-fi. Well, yeah, because obviously um, Faye Grant, she plays the resistance leader, doesn't she? Yeah, uh, Juliet Parrish, yeah. Mm. So, um, you know, and she's sort of like a woman who uh, is, a, is a scientist, or was she a scientist assistant? I can't remember. But, um, you know, she's just somebody who has pulled together a load of people doesn't really know what she's doing and everybody's looking at her for direction. She has to find that strength in herself to do it. And then you've got on the other side, Jane Badler's Diana, who is a really, you know, she she's a very strong character who is fighting for control over everything mm. while being thwarted by people who were less knowledge above her but also fighting people who are trying to undermine her at the same time. Well, yeah, because there is a splinter. There is a splinter group from the aliens that don't don't approve of her tactics, are they? So no, I'm not on about the fifth column. Oh, okay. And what I'm talking because that's the alien resistance, the visitor resistance. Hmm. What I'm talking about is the fact that you know the like admiral who comes in and then says you can just stick to science duties. Or there is, uh, what's his name? It's, is it Simon or something? I can't remember what his name is. Who's like one of the main sort of leaders. You know, the one who's have, who's that sort of like having a, uh, seems like he's always flirting with that, uh, Mike Donovan's mother. You know? Yeah. Yeah, him. He's always trying to undermine Diana and she's sort of like batting him down and stuff like that. So, you know, I think if you want to look at a good example of strong female characters in sci fi, Look at me. Very yeah, easy. Yeah. You know. So you you're thanking you're thanking me for buying this, but I'm thanking Film Eighty Nine for actually having their podcast on it, which is for about over two hours long, which I was thoroughly you need to probably listen to it yourself actually. You I have enjoy actually, I have. I really oh, enjoy have. I, I I do listen to Film Eighty Nine. I think that they do a fantastic job. It'd be yeah. quite nice if we could like link shows somehow at one point, have a bit of a crossover, but yeah. that's a, that's another thing. Um, but the show also marries a load of other themes that you just don't see all these things in a sci-fi. You know, it's talking about the morality of abortion, coercion, torture, brainwashing, collaboration with the enemy, <laughs> that what life would be like under occupation, all under the same umbrella mm. with, oh, and rape, you know, all under the same umbrella as this alien invasion. You know, so it's really quite... Uh, a fascinating sort of thing um, and so much imagery from this movie is uh, sorry, this uh, series has been taken to movies You know, like for example the imagery that they use in Independence Day with the well, flying the first, sorters well, it looks like a carbon that, copy it is the first thing that comes to mind and obviously that's where they got it from for yeah. that, I mean it's it's plain as day isn't it yeah absolutely, absolutely. and also I love the cheesiness aspect of it, you know, and with like Mark Singer, the Beastmaster himself. <laughs> yeah. He's, he, I, I, I absolutely love his character of Mike Donovan. And I completely agreed with what they said on the Film 89 podcast about the fact that, uh, you know, that 
whatever pause he's in, whatever point, <laughs> he's got that sort of like quizzical, heroic pause and stance it's, with him. It's, it's, whatever it's almost, he does, it's, it's almost a pose for a catalogue he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it's like it's like it, it looks like he's posing for a photo shoot at yeah. every moment of the yeah, you yeah. know of it. And I just think it is he's just absolutely class. Mm. To be honest, I mean, you know, he was he, he was like the Luke Skywalker of the story, wasn't he? And Michael yeah, yeah. Ironside was like the Han Solo. <laughs> the thing is, actually, Michael Han Tyler. Comes, he actually makes that as well in his own way because he's such a great character. Oh God, yeah. I mean, you know, nothing is ever made worse by sticking Michael Ironside in. Let's face <laughs> it; he always makes whatever he's in better, you know. Mm. But his character of Ham Tyler and the dynamic between him and, uh, you know, Mike Donovan. Yeah, because they do come to fists at one point, didn't they? They, they, they do, with a fantastic fight, which, mm. to be honest, is probably the most realistic sort of fight scene seen on TV because they do look like they're landing real punches and they do get knackered at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. And then they're both yeah, sat breath. there and, you know, they're breathing heavily and, you know, they, they can't move. <laughs> And then my client side just turns round to Mike Donovan, looks at him, and says, "I didn't realise you felt so strongly about this, you know." <laughs> and that's sort of the cheesiness, and it's just fantastic. It really is. It's it might be a thirty-four-year-old TV series, but I'll tell you what, mm. it is. It stands up today and is a testament to the quality of V and V: The Final Battle. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. absolutely. I think it's. One of the examples of the best piece pieces of TV sci-fi that you can possibly watch. Yeah, but also it was a it was it, this turned into a, an event on TV because oh god yeah everybody was talking about it, wanting to know what was going to happen the next night. You'd be at, when I was at work, everyone was chatting about it. Yeah, you see, when I was at work, I was at school. Yeah, yeah, and we, we were talking <clears throat> about it there as well. You know. Everybody and I and just like on the film eight to nine podcast guys, one of them said, "Your dad, you know, his dad turned round to him and said, you 'You'll like this because you like Star Wars.' My dad did exactly the same thing. Yeah, exactly. He said, you know, and <laughs> this when this was first released, this was sort of like you know, beta max of VHS days. Yeah, it was as well. There's a, there's a couple of YouTube clips you can see which has got definitely got the the the, um, the lines from the VCR. Oh God, yeah, and I'll tell you what. I recorded these shows. Yeah, I did. I, I did the same. And I played them until the tape snapped. Yeah. <laughs> you I, know, had I, a, you... God. I had a Philips VCR, which was double-sided. Yeah. Do you remember them? I do. So you turn the VCR tape round to get the second art, use, use it like that. Yeah. But great. No, I, I had a Betamax. Yeah, I... I did. We, I think we had a Betamax eventually. But I, his Video 2000 was the Philips. Yeah. One as well, but yeah, it's a fantastic show, and uh, I, I, I urge people to go and check it out. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, th- this is sort of like rekindled my desire for a bit of nostalgic sci fi. Yeah, yeah, so, well, that's, it's funny because that's why I mean, even though my nostalgia is talking 1950s, I got a lot of love for, for the old sci fi from the 50s and 60s, yeah, um, particularly Star Trek. Oh, yeah, but there's these you've got. Invasion, Who? Of the Bo- Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh, yeah, classic. You've got them. Um, what else you got? There's This Island Earth. There's a, cl- there's a load of them. It used to be shown on BBC Two at six o'clock. Yeah. What was, it? Robin- what was it Robinson Crusoe on Mars? <laughs> Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet, yeah. So there's a, there's a, a, a flurry of, of classic sci-fi shows, sci-fi yeah. movies that are worth watching. I'm sorry, but... You know, Walt the Pigeon and sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people be going, who's Walt the Pigeon? Look him up on IMDb. Yeah. Yeah, he's, so... He's not, he's not got crow's feet either. No. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't on the crow either. No, he wasn't. <laughs> but no, but, it's, there, is a, there, is a, there is a big slew of these movies that came out that come America's fascination for, for flying saucers. But also, you know, and the 70s, I mean, you got... The six was it? It was sixty nine or something, wasn't it? Two thousand and one. Yeah, which is like a semi sort of sci fi mm. show, a film. 
um, even though it has the most bewildering beginning. I, I know the point in the beginning because it was supposed to be establishing the monoliths. Yeah. Started intelligent life on this planet beyond apes. But it was still quite, it's quite a cerebral sort of start to a movie. But then again, the whole film was quite cerebral hmm. in terms of, you know, what it was doing. Um, I think 2010 was a lot more political where, you know, much more of the age about the Americans version versus the Russians. Whereas yeah. they never did 2061 or 3001. And it'd be really quite good to see those getting made. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm trying to think of some others there. There was, um, when worlds collide, it came from out of space. Uh, it, it, it was uncle invaders from Mars. Was it called as well? Yeah. Plan nine from outer space. Yeah. There, there's, they're just great, great, great films. I need to. Well, Plan Nine from Outer Space is widely re- recognised as the worst film ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that that's a great film. It's so bad, it's good. But then, even in the eighties, you do have that. Um, that that what was that one? One with Michael J. Fox died in the first five minutes. I think he did, isn't he? Te- um, uh, with the little aliens coming onto onto America, American soil. Oh, uh, yeah, I know the one that you mean. Invaders from Mars. Yeah, but it was... It oh, was, Mars uh, Attacks. Mars Attacks. Mars Attacks, That's that it. was it. Yeah, yeah. with Burning Cow. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan with, a, uh, with his head and the body of a dog. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely bonkers movie that was. Oh, yeah, absolutely crazy. Uh, but, I mean, also, there's some good, from the, from the day, good TV mm. series as well, because there was the... Uh, the tripods yeah yeah remember that was a bbc drama and it was also the day of the triffids yeah and something else i was i was listening to wrong was it wrong real was listening to the other another show they linked with and i was listening to uh there there were three guys chatting and and a girl they were chatting about the twilight zone Oh, fantastic! And of course, it did the Twilight Zone in the eighties as well. But it, it was never a patch on the on the original. No, it wasn't. And there was something about the Gremlins one, you know, that was originally with William Shatner. That was um, Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet. Yeah, but then they did uh, another one with I forgot what's his name off off you know Bigfoot and the Hendersons. Um, yeah, <laughs> what's his name? Arr! And he was he was on uh, Planet of the Apes as well. Yeah. The so really. he. Yeah. So what they did, they they had him have the William Shatner role on the plane when he's he's looking out the window. Yeah. Losing his marbles because he's seeing this creature ripping up the um part of the engine on the plane. <laughs> yeah. I can, you know, I can see his film, and I can't think of what it was called. What it was called. He was in Dexter as well. He played a, a nasty sort of character in that, if you remember rightly. Yeah. And he did a he did a film recently. Now, Will Will Farrow did a. Was it the dad's film? Do you remember? Was yeah, it, it... yeah. It, uh, do you know what? Everybody's probably going to be screaming. And, and, and the sequel was was the two dads. It was Mel Gibson and and him in it as well. Do you remember? You can you remember the film now? John Lithgow. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I could I could not think of his name. Could not think of his name at all. It, my brain's <laughs> completely gone. Come on, guys! It is quarter to nine on a f- Sunday. Yeah. Should we? Should we, actually, should we, should we? Should we get to the questions now? Because. Uh... It's moving on time. Okay, well, I mentioned about the fact that I'd done, I've watched Harry Potter and The Prisoner of Azkaban. All I wanted to say about that is, um, Gary Oldman mm. played a fantastic character as, as it Silas Black. Yeah. And I'd have loved to have seen him being in that more. I think, you know, I, th- I think he was in the books more, wasn't he? But I think he, he got killed off in the films. Mm. But anyway. Great movies, great movies. Going to watch the rest of them as well. Okay, so with that and Steve priming me to move us on, let's move on to our listener questions. John, what's happening to us? Okay, so as always, and very late this week because we started uh, recording and I sudden, oh, just before we started recording, I realised... Mark hasn't sent us anything in, so I just prompted him by a quick uh, message and he uh, sent him straight away. So thank you for that, Mark, and I hope your back's better. So anyway, uh, Mark has asked us, 
do you still buy other games even when you're heavily involved in big open world games? And do you have two big games on the go at one time? I think that's a yes to both of us, really, isn't it? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes and yes, Mark. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, Red, Red Dead Redemption at the moment is fantastic and it's, it's just working out to be one of the best games. God, I've got how long now. And then you've got all these other games in the background that are coming out over Christmas or leading up to Christmas. Yeah, I'm not sure how many more I'm going to buy before Christmas, to be honest. I think Hitman 2 and... uh, What do you call it? Just Cars 4. I think they're going to be my limit, I think. Okay. So so what... what, You've got Red Dead. Mm. And we don't need to say that you've got Destiny 2 because we know that. And Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Origins, which I... But are you fair. actually playing that? I, I, yeah, I've done a fair big chunk of that before Red Dead came out. Yeah, but are you playing it now, or have you abandoned it? Um, for the I'm time a, being. Well, I'm abandoning because there's another open world, massive open world game that'll be coming out in a couple of days' time, which I'll be jumping on. <laughs> I didn't know you played Pokemon. <laughs> 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 we all know what that is. Please stand by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. So there you go. Yeah, and I, I have so many games on the go. It's amazing that I actually ever complete a game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you want to do about a second question? Okay. So how much? How much? <laughs> this is probably for you really more than me. How much does gamer score matter to you now over five years ago? Uh. I don't know. I've always liked Gamer Score. Mm. No, you do. <laughs> I I do. Yes. I'm not too fussed these days. If they pop, they pop. He says after saying, "Oh, and I've hammered the Gamer Score on Forza Horizon <laughs> for this week." <laughs> I did actually that time. I must admit, but that was only because they just pop naturally. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't going out of my way to. Yeah. I don't go out of my way these days to look at them to see what I could pick up. Like press A to get five game score or something like that. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I think actually it drives me to play games longer now, mm. because especially if it's ones where you can collect them afterwards. So, for example, I completed Spider Man, yeah, um, and then you know had three quarters of the achievements, but I thought actually let's just press on and let's platinum the game. So I went and platinumed it. Likewise, I'm pressing on with Assassin's Creed, even though I've <clears> completed the story. Mm. And it's quite nice to have 100% completed games in your list, I think. Yeah. I mean, how, ma- how many games have you won cared? Oh, God, no, I'd have to look on, I'd have to check on the um, online to have a look at that. Not as many as I should do, probably, but in, I, you know, not too fussed over that. Yeah, well, I've done 82. Yeah. Also, sometimes I don't know what type, where you've had the time to do some of them. To be honest. Well, uh, time management, mate. That's what it is. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just effective time management. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, both trophies and achievements are good things. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I mean, now. Um, I assume that's Gamer Scores now 230,229. And this time last year, it was, I think, what was it? I think it was about two, sorry, 100 and about 160. Mm. So I've really gone for it this year. <clears throat> oh, okay. Really gone for I have it. Something else. Oh, I have something else I need to make. Oh, do you know what? There's something I needed to mention at the beginning of the show. Completely lost. But I'll mention it when we get to Facebook because it's probably appropriate. Okay, okay. So let's, in that case, then, uh, let's go on to the Facebook questions. Do you want to do polls? Yes, because that's what I'm on about. So, Bill Wilson says Did you manage to see the so called video Nazis from the early 1980s before they were banned? Um. <clears throat> I would have been, he would have been around 11 or 12 at the time, but he managed to catch, watch pretty much all the main ones. And he's got their Zombie, Day of the Dead, SS Camp, ex- Experiment Camp, and I can probably think that Can See More will be Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. So you're not a horror fan, are you? So I don't think you probably saw any of these, did you? 
Uh, yes, I did, actually. Um, because some of the other ones he was on about, it was actually Cannibal Apocalypse, uh, Driller Killer. Driller Killer, I remember grabbing... It's funny because at one point we had... I'll take my phone off there. At one point we had um, a campaignist against violence on TV. Do you remember? Yeah. Mary Whitehouse. Oh, God, who can't remember Mary Whitehouse? And <clears throat> a lot of these video nasties, as they were called by her, suddenly got taken off the shelves. Yeah. And that did include some that are back out there now, back out in mainstream, like Evil Dead. Yeah, well, actually, Evil Dead was one of the ones that uh, I actually saw. Yeah. No, I saw that in the cinema, mind you, so that was before before it came onto, onto the VCR. So you saw Cinema Nasty. <laughs> cinema Nasty, oh, yes, I did. I saw a few Cinema Nasties. I mean, I don't. I'm, I think even probably Dawn of the Dead might have been banned for a bit as well, and I think The Exorcist was banned as well. So there was quite a few. Yeah, definitely. Um, zomb- uh, one of the other zombie movies I remember, which was the Flesh Eaters movie, and there's a scene there which you see a zombie grab this, I think it's a woman, and got her by the hair, and you, there's a piece of splintered wood that pokes out, and you see it go into her eyeball and pop her eye out. <laughs> Nice, pleasant. <laughs> but they say Driller Killer. I remember watching that with the guy running around with the drill into people's heads. I don't remember that at all. La- to be la- last house on the left, and one I do remember, which I remember this one little funny story. I spit on your grave. Did you ever see that one? Nope. So this woman was raped. If she was in like a in the bayou sort of area in in, in the state somewhere, all these creepy people. And she gets raped by these this group of this group of um, adults. So she goes back on a revenge mission to to deal with it, the trauma. And there are pretty pretty gruesome ways that she gets them back. Oh, hold on a minute! Wasn't she uh, they, raped they did, on her bed or something? They did. Re- I, I can't remember. It might have been in the woods in the, when she was in in a. In a I, I remember, cabin. No, I remember watching one where this woman lived in a apartment and she was raped in her bedroom hmm. tied there to was, the bed they did they did do a sequel for this and a, and, a, and a second one as well on top of that i wonder if that's what it was i can't it, it was so many years ago i can't remember you know you're talking about what 30 years ago that yeah but they this. did the remake was pretty new they did yeah. two remakes but um but yeah i remember watching that at home and my mum walked in she looked at the tv did a completely 360 on her feet and walked straight back out again. Because <laughs> I, I can't tell you what the I, I can't tell you what the scene was because I, I just can't. It's it was really gross. Yeah. But yeah, no, I did enjoy those. Now it's something I I have I did this week, and I've never ever done this before. But I have a big passion for horror movies, and back in the day, I'd, I'd seen them all. I <clears throat> I, got, I got a big collection on. VCR, not so much now on, on Blu-ray, but I do like to pick them up every now and then. So I've been watching horror movies back from the 70s and even some of the stuff older. And I saw something on Twitter where there's a documentary being made relating to horror from the 80s. Yeah. And then some of these movies would probably be included. As much as then you had Freddy with The Nightmare on Elm Street, you had Jason Voorhees with uh, Friday the 13th, um, Chucky with the Child's Play, and all sorts of... So I funded a Kickstarter. All right. And this film's... It's for this documentary, this this film's being made. Yeah. And I should get my my rewards for that in May next year. Nice. And I did actually talk to a... I'll have to dig out my wallet. There's a couple of guys I spoke to in the queue when I was at John Carpenter. And they do a horror podcast. Okay. And they were going to see the guys do, doing uh, making the movie after after that evening to interview him. Cool. So I will have to dig out their podcast. Because I did have a chat with them. and men- I did mention a part one as well, by the way, <clears throat> to them. Did you slip him a card? Um, no, because I didn't have my me and my missus slapped me for it. <laughs> he said, they, you, you, I should leave some in my wallet. And I said, yeah, I know, so I will do. But, but yeah, I... Yeah, funded this Kickstarter for this 80s horror documentary, which would be about three hours long, hopefully. Oh, very good. And they're going to have, a, they're going to, they've got a lot of the, the actors and actresses from all those movies to be in this documentary. 
Yeah, cool. So, yeah, my first Kickstarter. <laughs> I have to admit, I was seriously looking at Halloween, the original on Blu-ray the other day. Well, I got the 4K right now, remember? Yeah, I'm not so bad <clears throat> about the 4K in that. But, um, yeah, no, it's, I do love my horror movies, really do. And uh, some of the some of the of those ones from the 80s come back. That, I'm really passionate about that, hence I decided to do the, the Kickstarter. I mean, looking back at the old ones that were banned, do you honestly think that they were actually that bad? Because some of them were really quite naff, to be honest. Well, I think Evil Dead got banned more, probably more for the the rape scene with the tree. Yeah. That might seem silly now. But at the, but when you watch it in context, I mean, this was Sam Raimi, remember, did this, did the Spider-Man yeah. movies. Um that the Evil Dead was quite a gross film. Special effects were pretty cool in it, I must admit, with the visuals. But I think it depends. I mean, when you look back at movies and you look at some of the movies that are made today, or remakes of today, and you look back at what was made in the eighties, and it might seem a bit cheesy. But I don't think. I think some of them still hold out. You know, especially some like Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm. They certainly have still got their charm. And ah, oh, yeah, there's some. There are some great films there, and there's some that are not so famous. Uh, it went by <clears throat> Hellraiser, for example. Do you honestly that's... think Hellraiser's not famous? Because to me, that's no, no, not. I'm not saying it's famous. I'm saying maybe not. Most, so many people know of, of Clive Barker's book Hellraiser and, no, and the movies not, that came from that. I think everybody knows who Pinhead is. Uh, prob- I don't know if a lot of our listeners would do. It depends when they were if they were being kids then, maybe. Well, I was you know? a kid then, but I still know who he was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe, but uh, yeah, and also one of the, the other actor in it, the one that was um, the husband of the, the wife in that, who played the baddie in Dirty Harry. Yeah, but also, <coughs> was it uh, Hellraiser Hellbound, wasn't it? That was uh, Jadzia Dax. Yeah, but I say sometimes the first film's always the best. They do rinse them a little bit, especially with the, with the Freddy, Freddy, uh, Freddy films. Yeah, they they did have a very big dip in quality. But of course, linking back to the V with yeah, Robert cause England. because he, he did that just before, he did um, V just before um, Freddy, didn't he? No, I think it was uh, overlapping. No, I don't, do you know, I looked it up and I thought, I don't think it did. I thought when, it did. Yeah, if you check out the release date of V, because obviously, remember, it was in America. It came out in America first before we saw it. Yeah. By about a year. Yeah, that's very true. We had a, a big delay there, didn't we? Yeah. And then we had V, the final battle, with V tagged on in one, probably in a couple of weeks, I think, that day it all came out. But um, but no, yeah, yeah I, could, I could... If I went back and went through my list of horror movies, I could, I could chat all day. <laughs> Actually... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was 1984. Yeah, and it came out before then, V did, in America. Yeah, because it came here in 1984, didn't it? Yeah, it came a year 1983 later. 1983 it came here. Yeah, so it might have been 82 then in, in, in the States. Uh, but V, the final battle, hmm. and a Nightmare on Elm Street was at the same time. Yeah, but it would have been that delay, so he had already filmed that. But yeah... Who would have known it was him anyway at first? I think it was. In well, that he had mask. so much uh, stuff on him, didn't he? Hmm. He did, yeah. Anyhow, you're next. Okay, so Albert Benefer. With the recent comments from Destiny regarding the lower than expected profitability and failure to recapture the core gamers, how much do you think the lack of initial content and lack of a unified audience played a part in this. Would Bungie have been better off without major platform exclusivity deals in the first place? I skipped out on Destiny 2 because I play on my Xbox, my friends are on Xbox, and I have no intention of purchasing a second console just to play all of the exclusive content. Exclusivity is bad for games and bad for gamers. I agree with him on that. I do. I think it was very minimal what they gave you on Destiny, wasn't it? They gave you an exotic weapon, a couple of more maps, wasn't that, was that about it, really? And some, and some different looking armour, which was probably replaced in about two weeks when you got decent stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is, if you 
turn round, just just like the Destiny One as well. You look at you know everybody was making a big deal because oh there was exclusive stuff on the PlayStation that there wasn't on the uh, Xbox on the original Destiny, and it ended up being the Jade Rabbit, which. To be honest, I preferred Thorn to the Jane Rabbit, Rabbit any time anyway. Mm. And then there was that Scion strike, which we hated. Do you remember that one? The one where you had to, you had to kill those three different uh, Scions yes, on that I platform do. at the end. Yeah. That, you know, that was the exclusivity. So, to be honest, stopping yourself from playing Destiny 2... Because you're not going to get a strike and a, a gun. It's really quite daft in considering when you look at the scale of that game and how good the game actually is. Mm. And the fact that Steve's dying for another teammate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been solo and everything. I, I, well, I'd say you've, you've got been to check playing out... PlayStation, mate. You've you not check... seen Yon. You should see, you should see Gambit on, on, on Destiny. It's brilliant. It's really good. It's a really good. Um... It's well, it's, it's a little bit play versus play, but it's a great mode. I've actually. yet to play that. Honestly, it's it's because you you hardly deal with the opposing team until one of them comes into your well and you, he tries to kill you, and you try to kill him back. Yeah. Other than that, you're trying to uh, load enemies onto your onto your opponents in their world while you're collecting orbs while killing um, characters in yours. If you know what I mean. I do. Yeah. It's re- honestly, it is a really good mode. And tonight, put down everything else. Come on up when we finish this. Come on the gambit, and you'll see how good it is. It's I've got fantastic. a wedding the show, mate. <laughs> well, that, that takes wait hours. Till tomorrow. I know it does, but you can let it edit itself and get on to destiny. <laughs> I, I think our listeners will probably want me to actually edit the show first and then play destiny afterwards. We'll right. play it tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I, I think I might back on call next week. I'm not sure the week after. Anyway, that's they got, he, he's making excuses now. Anyway, well, like no Barry Cooper, you and me. <laughs> I know, I know. So Craig Cole says, "What's your What's your thoughts on Disney's Plus, their streaming service from the Disney films and TV, Lucasfilm, Marvel, or Pixar, <clears throat> um, and how will this affect Netflix? And how about how many subscription services you have to deal with in the future?" So Disney are going to be pulling all their content from Netflix at some point for their own streaming service. Yep. And firstly, are you going to buy it? Will you go down that route? No. There's no need to, is there? No, because well, you're not going to get these things on Netflix anymore because the the ex you know the the deals with them are going to they've already said they're going to take all of their content off other platforms, which is fine. I'll just buy the stuff I want on Blu-ray. And what about the new TV shows that they're going to be producing? Is a new they're going to do a, a, a um, couple of more Star Wars bits and pieces, aren't they? And stuff like that. Would that tempt you when they're, when they're made? When they're on Blu-ray, yeah. Hmm. But um, I'm not. I'm not going to subscribe, especially to a Disney one. I subscribe to Prime Video. I subscribe to Netflix. I subscribe to Sky. I don't need any more in my life. No, absolutely. Okay, would you like to do Nicky Wilson then? Because he's got a couple. He has indeed. So, what do you think about Prima closing down? Do you have many guidebooks? Well, if I spin my chair, like the captain can, I can count about 15 books up there. Maybe it's not as many as most, but I like do like to get them when it's a, a good game. Yeah. Well, what about if, yourself? If I spin my chair... Like well, I you can. More, you got more than me, I think. I have none. <laughs> Do you use the internet then? Yeah. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I would much rather use the shelf space to put more games in than to have books about games that I'm not going to use. Because if if you get you know, these Prima guides and that, I always think that they're a bit of a cheaty thing if you use them when you're playing the game. Mm. And if you don't use them, when you're playing the game, but you get by them for afterwards, then they seem a bit pointless because you already know what they're telling you. Well, when it's an, I think that's a bit different because when it's an open world game, which has got a lot more to do after the story's finished, then that's what they're, they're, they're worth their weight in gold then. Yeah. I know but... we've got the internet and everything else, um, but I just, we like books and they, they, they're, the hardback books are really nice. 
I'm I much prefer uh, to be honest, just watch it. Uh, so watching a YouTube <clears throat> video. Mm. So that that's just you know my personal personal view. You know things like Elite Dangerous, for example. I don't have a book on it or anything. I don't even think there is no, this, a book. No, I mean, but, I wouldn't have one for Destiny because you don't need one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But when I the ones I've got like for Final Fantasy, Fable Two, Red Dead One and Two, I've got. Resident Evil there. Got a few Fallout ones as well. So yeah, not they're not for me to be honest. The guidebooks. Mm. I've I've dabbled with the thought of getting them in the past, but um, no, I, I'm not really that interested to be honest. Okay, so Nikki's got two questions in here. So this one's probably quite quite appropriate. So, what are your, what are some of your favourite respectful war movies or TV shows? Okay, I'm not really into war films, to be honest. It's not my sort of bag or forte. But what I would say is a good one that I would put in would be Schindler's List. Yeah, yeah. I know it's not your standard sort of one because normally, you know, you expect the sort of like Saving Private Private Ryan or Fury or that you know that sort of movie don't you where it's all kind of action and you know that but uh no i would say that that was a good one i've also watched pearl harbor mm. oh the uh yeah okay yeah I'm with you. The, mm. the ben affleck and matt damon matt damon one. <laughs> yeah and you've never seen the great escape which just sounds no really i good. have seen the great escape i just don't it, it, it. It, i don't really remember that much of it no, I've always watched it piecemeal, and it's it's just it's just not for me. I didn't like Platoon. I didn't like Full Metal Jacket. I didn't like Apocalypse Now. Oh, they're fantastic movies. They're, what are you about? I don't like war movies. Yeah, they're just absolute. And Band of Brothers was an awesome TV show, and The Pacific. Maybe so, but doesn't mean that I have to like them. Daz Boat. Yeah, another one, a great one. Yeah. Ones that I don't like and ones that I think are really disrespectful is, uh, like, for example, that one that uh, was made by an American, you know, it was like an American film made by Americans with Americans. And it was uh, about when they found the Enigma machine. What, the recent one? Yeah, the recent one. And they had that, you know, it was Dark Knight, it was bad weather, it was all Americans who did it. That is so disrespectful to how it actually was, because it was a British crew that found it. It was the middle of the day. It was bright. It was sunny. It was calm. And there wasn't an American in sight. And that, <coughs> was that, to was that, me... Was that, the one, is that the one with Benedict Cumberbatch? Uh, it was you something. I can't remember what it was. There was one, there was one to do with the Enigma machine with Benedict Cumberbatch, which wasn't bad, actually. Do you know what? It might be a good film, but if it's not historically accurate, that's mm. where I have a a problem with it. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna do a war movie about the Second World War, unless it's completely fantasy, like killing Hitler, for example, or Inglorious uh, Bastards, mm. as a, another example, you know, I, I don't know whether I don't think that that was based on anything in reality, but that was sort of like a self-contained sort of thing. Whereas I think if you're going up against something which is a very important historical thing, it's so disrespectful to the people who served and did that to then turn round and completely change the story. Mm. And basically in what is a bit of propaganda for America. You know, in reality, you know, it's making the Americans look good, but it was the British who actually did it. Mm. And it's just like, if we did the same thing to the Americans, it'd be wrong, because it's just disrespectful to the people who served and did that, and it shouldn't be done. Mm. That That's my personal p- point of view on that, but... Okay, so on that happy and cheery note... <laughs> so what's your <laughs> one said? Oh. You haven't mentioned yours. Oh. Well, some of the classic ones, Dan Buster's... Battle of Britain, um, these ones that were made in the in the sixties and seventies. Bridge over the River Kwai. Yeah, that one. And the one, the one that my granddad was involved in, uh, which is uh, oh, I've forgotten what it was now. 
I spoke to you about it earlier. Uh, well, I can't remember now. Do you remember what it was? And I mentioned it to you. You've forgotten, haven't you? I can't remember what it was. So the one where they drop, they, it's the one where they have the drop, they drop into Arnhem to do the bridge, take the bridges out. <clears throat> the dab busters. No, no, no. Oh, come, come, come to me in a minute. Um, anyway, so yeah, there's many great escape, obviously, and um, re- I say more recently, the Band of Brothers was a great TV show. The Pacific, um, the Pacific was based on Pearl Harbor and, and the Japanese. Remember that? Mm. That was really good as well. Now, Shinder's This is quite a, is a good one as well. You mentioned earlier, obviously Tom Hanks. You've mentioned that one as well. So yeah, this this is some great war movies. But if you if you if it's not your bag, it's not your bag, is it? It's... Well, there's a Guns of Navarone, isn't there? Yeah, that was with Har. They did a sequel with Harrison Ford in that. Yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah, uh, the Thin Red Line. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, they, they, I think war as it as it is did produce a hell of a lot of movies. Like you see the Dan Bus is, um my school my one of my school teachers was his son, uh, the guy that invented the bouncing bomb. Yeah, well I I used to know somebody who was on the team that invented it as well. And then obviously the the other one I'm thinking of, which was um the Doug to do with Douglas Bader. That was another great one and <clears throat> he came down there's an airfield not far from where he used to live, and that's where he lost his leg. Uh, very famous story. Yeah. But, yeah, there's, oh, there's loads. It really is. Anyway. So. Anyway, but, yeah, th- there is. And uh, what about video games? Made with Medal of Honor. That's the first one, first couple that came out. Yeah, some of the original COD, COD ones. I have to admit, I mean, I've, you know, I've never been in war. I never have a desire to be in war. I probably never will be in war, unless something really drastic happens. But I thought Battlefield 1 really got the message across very well in yeah. the way that they portrayed it. They made it very humane, I think, and very grounding and made you understand the struggle that people had. Mm. So, you know, I, I think... In terms of dramatisation like that, I think that that was quite a respectful uh, game that they made there. And I hope that the next Battlefield, which I think is yeah. World War Two, isn't it, is going to be anywhere near as good as that. Yeah, so just quickly, my, the, my, the, the one of the campaigns my granddad was involved with um, was dramatised in the movie A Bridge Too Far. That was it. Yeah, and that, that film there had Dirk Bogart, James Kahn... Michael Caine, Sean Connery, Edward Fox, Elliot Gould, Gene Hackman, Andy Hopkins, Heidi Kruger, Laurence Olivier, Ryan O'Neill, Robert Redford. Mm. Huge cast. I actually have to dig that one out again, actually. That's a, that's a great movie. So, anyway, are we done? I think that we're done. So, Steve, do you want to give you contact details? Yes, so, Twitter at Steve007, PSN, the real Steve007, Xbox Steve 7 and email Steve 7 at popculturegaming.co.uk. Have you checked those emails yet? They're blank, I think. Okay, fair enough. You were having problems accessing it, that was all. I know, yeah, and I might still be, but they were blank as far as, but we'll have, we'll have a look at that. Okay. Anyway, yourself? My YouTube channel, just search my name, Hayden Reese Jones, on Twitter, PSN, Xbox Live, Steam, I'm HRJ UK. If you want to get in contact with uh, me or the show, just email podcast at popculturegamers.co.uk. Don't forget we have a Facebook group. Just look for Pop Culture Gamers in there. You can follow us on Twitter. Just look for us at Pop Culture Gamer. We don't have an S on the end of that one because it would exceed the length allowed for the name on a, uh, Twitter. Also, we have our website, popculturegamers.podbean.com and don't forget, join us on Battle.net at Pop Culture Gamers as well. That's it. Yeah. Another show in the bag. So, in that case said, it's a good night from me. And a good night from him. Good night. Good night. You are about to witness history in the making. 